And uh, tonight we continue with our virtual ATC Ground School. We've, we've lots to learn tonight because this is part six, lesson three. You swear there was some sort of a plan, right? Um, planning a VIA4 flight. So our plan this evening, our plan, we're going to be looking at flight planning through the ICAO and also VATSIM. We're going to be looking at the differences between VIA4 and IA4 flight planning. Uh, we need to plan a route, check out where it is we're going to go. We need to check out the location. We need to check out the weather and if there's going to be any ATC along the way. Then we're going to plan to fly from A to B in uncontrolled airspace with no controllers, only ourselves to talk to. I mean, this is just beyond exciting. That's a big 10-4 rubber ducky. Red, your man. Call signs, right? But Unicom, um, it basically gives the ability for pilots to talk to pilots within the world of VATSIM. It's done it's ever slightly different than it is in the real world. Real world having the use of CTAF and other things. We don't need to worry about those right now. We have been progressing from the introductionary point of ATC. That's everything from getting your, you know, your microphone and your headphones set up, planning a little push to talk button, picking a call sign, choosing a call sign, and for the very first time, pressing a big button somewhere that makes you talk. Well, it doesn't. It turns on your microphone and then you talk, right? Then we progressed all of that on to circuits or traffic patterns. We started off just getting from a general call to ATC. So we had to check the weather. We requested an engine start and also uh, we requested clearance to carry out VO4 circuits. Then we powered up our aircraft. We requested a taxi, we received a taxi instruction, and we continued on our merry little way. We held short of the active runway. Then we received our instruction of what we were going to do in the circuit or the traffic pattern, and we flew a number of circuits. One having, well, two of them having touch and goes, and then one with a landing. All the while maintaining uh, communication with the air traffic controller. And of course, keeping up to date uh, with making sure we don't, you know, crash. We have to fly our plane without, you know, breaking things. So we've done all of these things. However, if you've missed anything or if you are struggling with all of that stuff, well, fear not, because what we're moving on to now, it's actually a little bit easier. In fact, most of the content that we will be doing tends to get a little bit easier the more we do it. There's the initial, what in the name of je And then it calms down a bit, right? Until we get to IFR, then there's another, what? And then it calms down again, right? So there's a bit of that, bit of that to go through, do you know? So um, there's a new document available um, as I look for the button that I have to press and then I press it. That's the one. There's a new document available, right? Uh, and it's over on our Discord and it is that of the ATC, uh, ATC course, Brown School, and I've called it version three. Like a virgin, not that sort of virgin, version three, right? Uh, because, well, we're progressing here at a rate of knots. And I was very busy last week because I added in about 20 something pages, 23 pages, right? Not like me to be on the DOS. So <laughs> there's, there's quite a bit to go through this, but like everything we've done so far, well, don't let it kind of, you know, make you weak at the knees. We'll be doing this step by step. And this course that we're doing or this lesson that we're doing tonight we're going to be here next week doing pretty much the same thing again is to get ourselves very comfortable flying within uncontrolled airspace but having the knowledge and the awareness to be able to communicate our intentions and also listen to the intentions of other pilots so we can maintain visual separation and keeping away from other aircraft or any hazards um, we can do all this live on VATSIM from the get-go pretty cool right so We'll start at the beginning, for it is the best place to start. So what we're going to do, we're going to ramble into the chat. If you're, if you're new here, and it's the very first time arriving, welcome. It's me, your man, with the head. And uh, you'll find all the details that we're looking for tonight. But well, they're over on our Discord, you see. So there's a linkage, gone inage uh, for the Discordage. And uh, once you get into Discord, you ramble in. I'll show you, look. Murphy, you could... Oh, if I put that picture up, Gibbo would never talk to me again. Uh, this is our Discord. And when you ramble into Discord, you arrive at the arrivals page. Looks a little bit something like this. You'll get your logo shown up and one of our lovely moderators will ramble in and say, How are you? Did you bring that? Nice. Right? And uh, well, once you get in, 
you go to the start here section start here and uh, have a read down to the terms of the server the guidelines if you will some very important rules there and uh, one of them says don't be an idiot and uh, behind my mallet here when i disappear there's a shamrock ah be jesus there's a shamrock down the bottom with someone pressing buttons left right and center if you click on the shamrock it will open up the entire discord server isn't that handy and all you need to do left hand side there's two things to do here lads you'll notice at the top right just in case you're saying murph you've way too much going on in your yes, we know if you start off with the browse channels this will actually give you a full overview of every single channel and also notice the blue tick over on the right hand side well if you untick that it means that it won't alert you and you won't see it so there's certain things perhaps you mightn't be interested in within our discord channel for instance you mightn't have any care for sports right or for food maybe you know maybe maybe you don't eat food right uh, but you can click on the little arrow over here or the tick and untick it and voila it will disappear from the list on the left hand side anyway each page has a description of what it is and what do you kind of do there but if you ramble down all the way we need to find the pilot ops and uh, there's two ways to find it. you can find it in the browse channels or you just ramble down the side here until it says pilot ops and inside pilot ops we're going to click on the atc course this is the atc course and each week i'll put up more information and update it and tell you what it is that we're doing now this is a read only discord meaning you can put in you can you know you can reply with emotes or emoticons or emojis you know or smiley faces as two-tone senior calls them put in a smiley face huh? um but it just means then that it's one-way communication so everything is there if and when you guys need it every single lesson that we've done thus far it's all here all right so uh, by scrolling down to the bottom that keeps you up to the latest and most up to date and this is where you'll find the TTM Virtual ATC Ground Course version 3. You need to click on that, it'll download and then it'll open into a book. That looks like this. So at the very, very top of this book, it'll open and it'll say Virtual ATC Ground School version 3. Uh, and then we have a lovely picture of Dublin Airport. Even though we're based in Shannon, I only cop that now. But anyway, if you ramble down on the left-hand side of the contents, well, I've created clickable links for... They should work. I hope they work. Anyway, if there's anything you need to find, for example, any of the abbreviations that are used, especially in VO4, well, click on abbreviations and it'll bring you down here to all of the stuff. ETA or, you know, GPS or, you know, um, uh, MDA. Right, it explains what everything is. And then if you need to go back to the contents, well, there's a little link down the bottom left of every page that says contents. Click on that and search it. <laughs> science, right? It's science. So anyway, what we're doing tonight, friends, uh, we're going to be starting off on section seven, which is our flight plans. So that's what we're doing now. It's starting off on page 50 and we will be working our way down. The idea here is to keep this as a digital document. You can print it, but, you know, save the trees, man. Party old Greta will be going nuts because I'm, I'm constantly updating this. And every time there's a new version, I'll pop it up and let you guys know about it. So you can see this is what we're going through tonight. We're going to have a read through flight planning. I'm going to show you how to do a flight plan, what's involved, where do you get the information from, what do we need to consider when we want to do a flight plan. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the VATSIM and also an IKO flight plan. What does everything mean? That. You know, did you ever see like, what do you mean by equipment suffix? You suffix, right? We explain what everything is within reason. Then it'll show you a sample VF4 and a sample IF4 flight plan when using applications like VPilot or XPilot or whatever gadget you want to use, right? Then, friends, there's even more of it because we'll be filing a flight plan uh, on the VATSIM network tonight. We're actually all going to do it tonight. And we don't necessarily have to fly on network but we still want to be able to plan and file a flight plan. And that'll stay on your VATSIM account, which means you can go back and check it out. Then after that, we will proceed on to the equipment suffixes with all the information. We also talk about uh, CCAL codes, transponder and the usage of a transponder and what the differences are, what it looks like on the radar screen for the geniuses who operate them, right? Uh, and also what the different switches and stuff do on the transponder. You guys may have seen this. You might be familiar with it. To other people, you were like, it was that funny looking calculator, right? That's the thing that we're going to look at um, and how they work. And then we ramble down a little bit further 
and we talk about uncontrolled airports. What do we mean by uncontrolled airports? Well, it basically means it's an airport, but there is no ATC coverage there. In actual fact, there's no ATC coverage in that entire area. This happens quite a lot when you go to VFR flying. You don't necessarily fly into a controlled VFR tower, unless, of course, it's within a major centre, somewhere like Dublin, for example, which is live tonight. Well, a lot of the smaller airports around Dublin, because they are residing within the airspace of Dublin, well, using VATSIM's top-down approach, technically, you'd be talking to the controller of that area, technically, if you're going to enter their airspace. And we'll do a quick read-up on airspace as well, right? Jesus, there's stuff happening, look! I'll get into the chat now. Uno momente, numero uno. Right? Anyway, uh, VFR communication for uncontrolled airports. What do we need to do? How, what do we say? Johnny, I'm over the hill! What do you mean you're over the hill? Right? There's a bit of that. Um, then we talk about departing. Our en route or on our way when we're getting there. Then we talk about the arrival process. And this is all based on VFR uncontrolled uh, flight. Well, it's controlled flight, but in uncontrolled airports. Then finally, we move on to a lesson. We get to go flying tonight. And uh, we're going to plan the, uh, the entire flight. We're going to file it on the VATSIM network and then we're going to fly it. Now, we don't need to be live on the network. We're using our Discord for all of the communication tonight. And we'll see what way the numbers are. So we'll play that one by ear. There are four parts to our lesson. We're going to go through planning the flight, filing our uh, flight plan, the flight itself, and then we're going to review what we've done. Well, how did it all go for us? And then I've explained in this section and each of the sections, well, what are we doing and what are we using? So, for example, Navigraph. I'm going to be using Navigraph, but I'll also bring up Sky Vector, and we can also look up at the Irish Aviation Authority charts, because they're for free, and we can have a look at the location, because we need to plan out our route. Ventu Sky is a website. We're going to use that for checking out what the weather conditions are doing within reason. And then I'm going to use Volanta, which is also free, and we can use that to monitor traffic and also the ATC coverage. Filing our flight plan, we're going to be using VATSIM and SIMBRIEF, which is pretty straightforward. The flight itself, there are a number of different stages, just like what we've done on our circuits. Uh, there's not 10 of them. <laughs> You'll be delighted to hear. There's uh, seven stages of what we're going to do tonight. And I've put out some information uh, on what we're going to be doing and what we do at each section. And just like the circuit flights, lads, at each stage, I've indicated what it is we have to say. And that's within reason, right? There's no strict uh, phraseology needed when it comes to VFR in uncontrolled flight on Unicom, right? It's, you know, no one's going to give out to you. They'll give out to you if you're just chatting away, you know. So I went with Newla the other day to the shops. None of that goes on it, right? You keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Who, what, when, where, pretty much, right? Uh, but anyway, I'll explain all of this. Um, and then we move on. I'll show you a couple of charts that we're going to be using. Uh, and then we have the review. This section, we're going to use Volanta. And that's going to review our flight. Where did we go and how did we do it? For our Xbox pilots, we can't review every single step of your way. However, there are ways to do it. Uh, if you guys want to jump on to uh, Firefly Air and uh, you can do a PyRep. At least you'll have a record to say, well, you flew from Shannon and you went to Connemara. You can have an idea from there. All right. And by scouring the internet, uh, and I have a couple of links I'll put in the Discord tonight because I found some really helpful websites. There's just fantastic communities out there who work heavily when it comes to VFR flying. Um, we have some information in relation to Connemara and what's, what do we need to know about certain airports? Well, based off our last lesson, one of the very first things we need to figure out is the, the circuit. Is it a left hand? Is it a right hand? Because we need to know how we're going to join a circuit in order to get our aircraft safely on the ground. And that's kind of it, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, you'd be on the Oval Tea and Red Bull, maybe. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but we're going to give it all a bash now tonight. But don't worry. If stuff starts moving ahead a little bit fast, don't worry about this. We're going to go over this in its entirety again and again until you guys are very happy with it. All right. It's not a race to say, right, let's get airborne. This is a style of flying that would be quite different to what we're used to. This is not about flying in close formation, very close by to other people. No, this is trying to simulate what's done in the real world. You've got to keep a safe distance. You've got to keep your distance away from other aircraft, not only on the ground, but you've got to do it in the air as well. 
that's important. Now, there are limitations with the sim. Of course, you mightn't see the other aircraft. Hashtag 15, the multiplayer bug, which is moving up in the ranks. <laughs> right? I can't wait till it gets to hashtag 11. Just because. But there are limitations. So just be aware of that. Just try doing it this way. There's nothing worse if you're trying to do something right and then suddenly, before you know it, you're inside some... You're, phrase that carefully, will you? You're flying in... Jesus, you'd be too close to someone, right? That's what I was trying to say. So that's what we're going to try and do. So we'll start at the beginning, as I said, and the beginning is this part here, flight plans. Well, what, what are we talking about? So I'll read it, right? So before we want to take to the skies for a flight, we need a plan. Now, this is not the sort of plan you make at the last possible moment to hit me with a sippage whilst I'm on a very short final to the runway. No, no, no. This, or these plans require us to complete a document and provide all the information needed so that air traffic control know what we are intending to do. It makes sense. We want to go from here to there. Fair enough. The completion of an ICAO flight plan form, it's fairly straightforward. Usually it's only a matter of inserting the requested information into the appropriate boxes. It can, however, be confusing if you don't know what everything means or you don't know where to find the required information to complete the flight plan. Flight plans are mandatory for us if we wish to use an online network such as VATSIM, you know, IVAO, Pilot Edge. We need to put in a plan. We need to tell the controller, hey, we want to do this. Go from there to here. For this entire series, we're going to be focusing on SimBrief. The SimBrief dispatch system is the web's most comprehensive free virtual flight planning service. And it also has the capability to pre-file our, our flight plans onto the online networks, right? However, if you would like to learn a little bit more about the ICAO flight plans and how to fill them out, there is a website here over at the skybury.aero articles website. You can check it out there. There's a link. It's clickable. And away you go with that. So VFR versus IFR flight plans. So before we decide on what we're doing and where to go, we need to understand the differences between VFR and IFR. VFR, of course, visual flight rules. 90% is looking out the window, 10% on your in uh, instruments. IFR is the reverse. 90% is on your instruments and about 10% out the window or, you know, at your mate or something, as you know. But anyway, we might only fly one or the other. Others will fly both types in their simulator. Important to note that uh, the format of both flight plans are the same. Both use the standard ICAO flight plan format. The biggest differences between the two, IFR plans are a lot stricter and more precise compared to VFR. When it comes to IFR routes, it's mandatory to fill out the exact route you are planning to fly. SIDs, STARS, they might change, but the route in which you want to travel, they need to be exact. Of course, ATC can provide you with shortcuts and other changes to your route, but in the planning phase of your flight, when you're filling out your flight plan, the route must be the exact route you're about to fly. When it comes to VFR, it's not the case. Sure, you have to specify a departure and an arrival, but when it comes to the route, well, we got a lot more legroom to make changes during our flight. This is because that VFR traffic is not as heavily controlled as IFR traffic. Essentially, with IFR flight, we can file a route that we think we're going to fly and then make changes if we wish. However, these changes can only happen during the flight, if you're flying in an area that allows for it. We're getting into airspaces now. We need to keep in mind that this only works during the cruise phase. Departure, arrival and control zone crossings are a lot stricter when it comes to a route because these areas are generally more crowded. Well, it kind of makes sense. If we're in uncontrolled airspace, we're not in any like, you know, Bravo, Charlie or any of that jazz and there's not many other people flying there. Well, apart from like, you know, limitations with terrain, as in mountains, we're okay to pretty much go where we want within reason. However, if we're in a busy airspace and we say, hey, we just want to ramble out here, you know, don't mind the planes flying overhead, we'll just go this way. It's not as straightforward as that. There are some restrictions, all right? Now, planning a VFR flight. Before deciding on where to fly, we need a plan. The route, aircraft type, location, weather, traffic, airspace, and ATC coverage are all factors we need to consider. The route, well, we need to plan for fuel. How many waypoints? You don't need to have an extremely difficult route. We can just do a simple A to B. But if you're planning a route, if you want to go, say, a prime example, if you were flying in Ireland, you know, you want to go from Shannon to Dublin. But you've got to bear in mind that there's the odd traffic uh, restriction along the route. And you're also going to be en entering restricted airspace. And you're also going to enter a class Bravo airspace. 
uh, which would be mainly for Dublin. So there are restrictions along the way. So this is where your planning comes into it. All right. The aircraft type, again, it can be straightforward, but always remember this. When you're flying online, you need to be competent and proficient with the characteristics and the systems of the aircraft. You need to be in full control because if ATC asks you to do something, you can't really say, oh, Jesus, how do we do that? If I press control, shift and F4, like you won't get away with that. So you need to be very comfortable with the airplane that you're flying. And it could be something very basic. My advice, start off with something basic, especially now that you're learning new skills when it comes to your flying. I'm going to stick with a Cessna 172. I have flown other types of aircraft on Vatsim. And uh, hey, Sideshow Rod is here. Welcome in, my dude. You're very welcome. Happy Monday, man. And welcome in, Raiders. Um, but yes, you can uh, stick with something that you're familiar with. Something comfortable that you're not going to add Jesus. Leave the more complex stuff like your H320s and all of this. Leave that part for a while. The location. Well, we need to consider the rules applied to the location. Are you flying, you know, under FAA regulations in North America or are you going to be in Europe under the IKO rules? We also need to get familiar with the area. Points of interest, hazards, visual reference points, airports, restrictions. We need to understand where it is we're going to be flying. It's not as simple as looking at the map and saying, we're going there. We need to work out all the nooks and crannies of where we're going to be flying. I don't think it's class, Charlie. Anyway. The weather, the most important factor when it comes to VFR, because, well, we can't fly if it's cloudy, you know, zero visibility in the rain. It, we can't fly visually. We can't see a thing. There are some rules around what constitutes VFR conditions. With the sim, we can determine our own weather. We are the weather of God. No, we are the God of weather. However, it tends to be a lot of fun if we use real world conditions. This is the most realistic and VASM controllers usually operate with current weather when controlling. We also need to know our en route and destination weather. Forecasts are important as many VFR conditions require certain weather minima to be able to fly. So even though we're planning to fly from Shannon and we want to go to Galway up to Connemara, it could be beautiful in Shannon but lash and rain sideways in Connemara. That's going to have huge impact on our flight. We need to consider that. Also, when it looks at traffic, in particular when it comes into your flight simulation. Air traffic is an important consideration. Are we planning to fly near a busy airport? Or perhaps there's a VATSIM event planned. The last thing a VATSIM controller wants during a busy event is to ramble in and here is a Cessna doing its manoeuvre and requesting clearance to the Bravo. You, just, you don't want that headache because now you have to rack them and stack them and everything else. So we just need to be aware of that. Then we have, to, we have to look at the airspace and ATC coverage. We need to check our maps and the charts to make sure we are aware of what airspace types we will be entering and knowing if ATC coverage is available. There will be an interactive VFR flight plan lesson uh, in section, uh, or in lesson six, lesson three, part six. There's my first typo. There's my first typo, lads. Uh, but that's, that's what we're going to do, all right? That's just barely scraping the surface. I, you know, we can we can get hours upon hours of chat about each of these headings, but as a general rule of thumb, this is the basics we need to be considering when planning a VFR flight. Other things would go into, you know, limitations. Uh, there's, there's so much, but for the moment, this would be enough to get us started, especially when we start talking about control zones, you know, uh, airspaces, all of this. It's don't let that throw you off too far just yet we're going to keep it simple for the moment so don't worry about it this is just a general introduction we need to be aware of the route aircraft type the location the weather traffic airspace and atc just aware of it that's all we don't need to worry about it too much all right uh sideshow roger very welcome in and thanks for the raid man so vatsim and iko flight planning well flight plans are required for all ifr flights and optional for vfr flights this post explains how flight plans can be filled out on the vatsim network and explain some of the differences between how flight plans are filed. There are two ways to file a flight plan on the VATSIM network. Well, there's actually three or four now. But anyway, we can use the vPilot client. This uses the older FAA flight planning format, or we can use the online flight plan pre-file system. This one uses the new ICAO format. Regardless of how you file your flight plan, ATC has access to your flight plan information. You can file a flight plan using either of those methods. It doesn't matter. We'll show you how to do all that now. When a flight plan is filed using the vPilot client, the pilot or the flight plan is formatted using a modified version 
This format is then mostly f being phased out in the real world, but it continues to be used on the network. For how long, we don't know, but for the moment, it's grand. When a flight plan is filed using the online flight plan pre-file system, well, the ICAO-based format is used. In real life, the FAA now requires ICAO flight plans to be used, uh, especially if they're assigning ORNAV, SID, STARS, as well as IFR flights that will depart from domestic airspace. The FAA also recommend ICAO flight plans for domestic IFR flights. But again, that's not terribly important. The remainder of this post provides guidelines for filing flight plans in both formats. So we can use the FAA one or we can use the ICAO one. There's a general breakdown here of what do they mean. Well, a flight type. The type of flight plan being filed. Our available options are we can go IFR, we can go VFR, and in some cases you can go special VFR. Uh, the likes of defensive VFR used when transmitting on the aid is it, it's not, I haven't seen that used on VATSIM. Maybe, maybe someone could say um, otherwise. I've, I've never seen that on VATSIM. I've, I think I've seen it on Pilot Edge, but I've never seen it on VATSIM. All right. How's the view here, lads? Can you actually see what I'm reading? Your departure and destination airport, they're important. An alternate airport, if you're operating in IFR, the airport you might divert to in case of uh, bad weather. Uh, not required for VFR. You don't need an alternate for VFR. It's handy to have for your own personal planning uh, and especially in the real world. Departure time, we need to give them an idea when we want to get airborne and all times are in UTC or Zulu time. There's only one time, Zulu time. Forget any other time zone. Stick to Zulu. Everyone uses it. All right. Time en route, plan duration of the flight in hours of minutes. How long are you going to be flying for? One hour, two hours, six hours, whatever. Fuel available, you need to let the controller know how much fuel you have. Reason being, why would anyone think that's important? Why would someone say, hey, why do you need to let a controller know how much fuel you have? Anyone? Good question. It's a great question. Give me zesty beverage. Uh, Hello there. <laughs> Disco Duckler, welcome in. Uh, you can't get to your destination. Yeah, that's one of them. It could be the case that you cannot get to a destination or um, if they have to hold you. Tarnish, you got it, yeah. If they need to hold you, if ATC needs to delay you for any reason, um, they could say, hey, we need you to hold. Enter, you know, right 360s at such and such an altitude and we'll call you back. Uh, I don't have fuel for this. So they need to, they need to have an idea of how much fuel you have. All right. Good, good though. Few is note. Few is note. Cruise speed. The planned cruise speed expressed as true airspeed. Well, what speed are you going to be traveling at? You get a rough idea based on the profile of the aircraft. You're going to know in assessing it. Depending, depending, you should be up around 80 to 100 knots. Cruise altitude. And this, the, the gaps of altitude is important. IFR flights are always flown at altitudes on the thousands. Meaning... It's not halfway in between it. It's a set altitude for a set thousand feet at a time. One, two, three, four, thousands, yeah? VFR is the same, except they add 500 feet to each altitude in which they're crossing. Flights going eastbound fly at an odd altitude. So if you're heading east, it's an odd. 1357, so on. Westbound, they fly at an even altitude. 2468, yeah? If you're via 4 and you're traveling west and you want to be at 4,000 feet minimum, well, what altitude should you need to fly if you're via 4? You want to head west at around 4,000 feet. What do you need to do? you got to add in your 500. So it would be 4,500 heading west. You add it. You don't take away. You always add it. Yeah. So if you're traveling west, it's even altitude plus five, uh, 500. If you're heading east, it's odd value plus 500 for VFR. All right? Okay, we're getting there. Heavy aircraft, check this box if the aircraft maximum weight uh, for takeoff is above 300,000. It's not going to apply to us during these lessons. Heavies, usually 747, A3, well, A380, you think, what do they call them now? Are they ultra or something? I think it is. Is it like ultra heavy? Super, super, Rambo. That's it, that's it. Uh, equipment suffix. Uh, select the equipment suffix to your navigation capabilities. Essentially letting the controller know what kind of equipment do you have in terms of uh, navigation and communication. 
Fair enough. The route, we enter the route, including any proposed SIDs or STARS if we're under IFR. For VFR, the routes could be something as simple as Highway 25 or, you know, uh, M18 or N18 or Via Dromoland Castle and Oran Moor. The controllers of the areas are going to be familiar with the local landscape. They're going to know what's around, especially if there are published VRPs in the area on the charts. They're going to know these areas very, very well, right? Um, remarks. Enter any remarks or additional comments into the flight plan. For example, you may wish to enter, you know, new member, student pilot, just to let controllers know that you're learning uh, the airspace and procedures. Now, Skeptic Canton once told me to... They're going to know who's new on the network or not. Controllers will get a sense of that. Well, we all have to start somewhere. But if you, you know, hey, I'm a new member or a student pilot and, you know, that's quite okay. That's quite okay. You're, you're just letting them know what the crack is. Another thing I would put in remarks, if I'm flying anything commercial, I would say call sign, Firefly Air, and then a number. Just if I want ATC to call me as Firefly Air. Pretty cool, right? Or Firefly 235 or whatever. You can put that in. You can ask them, right? Voice. You need to tell ATC in VATSIM, are you using uh, voice or is it just going to be keyboard? We went through this before. So you're just saying select send and receive. We're required to use voice. Uh, that's for boss and virtual, by the way. BVA is boss and virtual. And uh, have you guys ever seen the boss and virtual wings program that they did? Highly, highly recommend it. So that's what this is from. But it's it's all universal stuff. So a sample VFR flight plan. Well, this is what it looks like. File a flight plan. This is using vPilot. XPilot is the same. Uh, it's, they're all pretty much the same interface. So you can see here, look, your flight type. Well, it's VFR. Departure, destination, alternate. You don't need it. It's VFR. Departure time, time en route, fuel available, cruise speed, cruise altitude is down here, right? Are you a heavy aircraft? The equipment suffix. We'll figure out what they are now in a moment. What your route is. And then remarks, student pilot, a new BVA member. So when these lads are all flying together, they'll say, oh, hey, this is a new member of the Boston Virtual. All right. That's where all that comes from. If you want to have a look at an IFR plan, it's slightly different. It's IFR, same departure and destination. However, you'll notice that they've put in an alternate, alternate airport. And the route is a little bit different because it says, hey, there's an actual route here. These are waypoints or airways. Yeah. And then you can see voice, send, receive, receive only, text only. All right. Now we have a pre-file or we have the online flight plan system, uh, which is over here. And this is over on uh, VATSIM, right? So if we want to use VATSIM, well, we can go into our VATSIM membership area and we go down to flight planning. Yeah. And if you have a look at flight planning, we have a couple of options. We can open up, for example, satellite imagery, weather and airports. You can actually do all of this from within VATSIM. Their website is fantastic, right? So satellite imagery, this should work, should load up, right? Uh, please select a, or select, so we want wind and temperature. Let's go with that. Uh, that should load in. It might take a moment. And then you have uh, chart fox, which is all free charts. So if you don't have Navigraph, you have options here with the likes of chart fox, all right? I don't know why that's not loading up. Anyway, we don't need to worry about the weather. We have other programs to do that. This is where you file a flight plan. So let's have a look. Your call sign. Now, if we're not going to be flying as an airline or commercial flight, well, our call sign, what might that be? It's not going to be Speedbird or Firefly Air. It's going to be the call sign we did. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. So we'll put that in. What are the flight rules? What are you flying with today? Well, we want to fly via four. Okay. What's the aircraft type? This is important. Now, a lot of the time you can select this from a drop down list, but we're in a Cessna 172. You just put in C172, or if you start typing, it should automatically come up uh, on some of the um, pilot apps, right? So we're in a Cessna 172. You can always do a search for aircraft type ICAO, all right? The wake category, nothing really. We're very light, we're less than 7,000 kilos, so we'll put in light. That's all to do with the turbulent air created from our aircraft traveling through the air, right? Now, equipment, this is interesting, it's looking for ICAO or FAA, it's looking for stuff. Leave it blank for the moment, we'll learn about it. Transponder, skip if FAA equipment. Again, we can put in whatever the details we need for our transponder, we'll learn about those in a moment. Departure and arrival are important. 
off block UTC, that means off the block. What time are you planning on taking off at? The altitude in which you're going to fly, the airspeed in which you plan to fly, time en route, and how much fuel in terms of endurance. How long can you stay airborne for? Then you have the route details, and then you have a whole load of other mad stuff down here, and you'd be saying to yourself, what in the sweet name of is this? Don't worry about it just yet, because we're going to learn what all this means, right? What it all means, which is dead handy. So if we ramble down here, this is where it says call sign, flight rules, aircraft type, wake category, equipment. So list the equipment capabilities of your aircraft, including all operable equipment. Even if you don't use uh, or you don't plan to use a particular capability of the flight, equipment capabilities are indicated with letters that correspond to a specific capability. For example, if you include the letter D, it means that your aircraft has a DME. As the information is not transmitted to USATC and VATSIM, the exact information you include is currently not all that important. But some common equipment entries are provided uh, uh, below. The basic stuff. Modern airliners, you could enter all of this in the equipment field. A lot of the time you don't need to. General aviation with a GPS FMS based ORNAV capabilities, SDG, or general aviation with no GPS, enter S. The transponder, we enter the mode, sorry, we enter one of the following characters. Note, despite what you file, VATSIM currently can simulate mode C transponders. So we just need to put in mode C. Departure, off the block, altitude, airspeed, everything else is there that we wanted. And then of course we have the route details, all right? Now the other details, that's why this document is handy because it explains what all the other headings is. PBN, indication of the ORNAV or the RMP capabilities. If you want to simulate, you know, RMP approaches using an RF, well, you can. These are the codes you'd put in, right? Uh, the date of the flight departure based on Zulu time. So DOF, date of the flight's departure. You could file a flight plan for tomorrow if you wish. Or EG or REG, it's the civil registration of the aircraft if it's different from the call sign. That's usually the case if you're flying with an airline, for example, Speedbird or Ryanair, but the aircraft reg is different, all right? Cell call code, usually only applicable to oceanic flying. We'll, we'll learn about cell call in a moment, right? OPR, the three-letter airline or designator, if you're not using the call sign. So the OPR, for example, does anyone know what Speedbird would use? Right, see, so have a look at that. Or ALT, ICAO indicators for the en route uh, alternates. T ALT, ICAO indicator for takeoff alternate. Won't Hello. really apply, right? Won't really apply. BAW Jeppesen, that's the one. Uh, Aer Lingus is Echo India November. That's the airline operator code. Then you have remarks. Any other plain language remarks when relevant? We recommend using call sign, whatever it is, when you were flying with a call sign that you feel may not be immediately familiar to ATC. I tend to go Firefly Air for the crack, right? And then voice rules, but well, they're the same. Now, no matter what type of flight plan you file, ATC and VATSIM will only receive the following information. This is what the controllers can see. Uh, who be this? Uh, Shilo, many thanks for the follow. Welcome in. The see the flight rules, IFR, VFR. The equipment capability as expressed by the equipment suffix number, right, or letter. Your departure, the altitude, and the arrival, where you're going. The alternate, if you have one. The route. The remarks populated by information you enter in the other details. And what voice rules you're using. The call sign and aircraft type code transmitted to ATC are based on how you connect to the network. Although other IKO flight plan information might be stored on the network, uh, it is not readily available to ATC. Okay. Equipment suffix. This is, you don't need to spend too much time on this, guys, because a lot of the stuff, for, for what we're going to do, a lot of our flight in VF4, we use the same code. And what I mean by that is, when providing aircraft type on a flight plan, pilot and operators are required to include information about the onboard certified equipment using an identifier code as a suffix to the equipment type. Um, the navigation system capability could be a modern GPS unit with a transponder that has mode C, for example. Right? Other aircraft, especially the vintage or the, warbir the warbirds, that's why I've included all of this, because they may not have that sort of equipment on board. They mightn't have a GPS. They mightn't have, you know, mode C for a transponder. 
Now, a lot of the warbirds that we have in Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, they've included in a modern uh, stack. You can see a transponder. You can see a radio COM1, COM2. They've thrown it in there for the likes of VATSIM to make life a little bit easier. But if you wanted to go with some of the older aircraft, the DC-6 has it, um, well, you can. But just be aware of it. This chart down here explains what we put in. So, 99.9% .9 of the time when we're flying, when we're flying, we have distance measuring equipment. Effectively, we have something on board that's going to tell us how far is it from us to there. And our transponder has mode C. We're slant alpha. And we don't call it as forward slash alpha. We're just slant alpha. Now you've often heard we can go slant golf. We can go, we can go whatever. Slant alpha, more than likely, is what we're going to be using uh, starting off. Right? You can go slant whiskey as well if you want. But... For the moment, let's focus on transponder with mode Charlie, Slant Alpha. That name might ring a bell with a lot of you guys. Slant Alpha Adventures, of course, a Twitch streamer. Well, that's what that's what he does, right? That's what Steve does. So, Slant Alpha. Just re we'll remember that later, all right? Uh, cell Cal. Cell Cal is not required to be entered to connect to VATSIM, both on XPilot and VPilot. Uh, all you need to do is enter the call sign uh, plus the maximum four letters of digits uh, and the aircraft you're using. Cell it's an older form of communication between pilots and ATC, mostly used on trans-oceanic flights, where the high-frequency radio was the only form of connection. Uh, it's comprised of four letters, it's grouping of two, uh, where the first letter in the group must come before the second letter. Don't worry about all of that, right? It's not going to apply to us yet. When we start looking at some of the vintage aircraft and some of the older radio communications, yes, we can look at it. But for the moment, just be aware that this cell call code, which effectively means selective calling, what it means is selective calling. This system could allow a pilot to mute every other chatter around him and only stay focused on who he needs to speak to. That's what they were used for. We don't necessarily need to worry about this for the moment, but you will see the name cell call and be thinking, the hell is that? That's what it is. Selective calling. It is not applicable to what we're doing. Just be aware of it. It's something there. All right. So moving on. Transponder and usage. If you've never done any controlling on VATSIM, then you might find it useful to download one of the controller clients and the packs and log in as an observer on occasion to see how controllers work and the information that they have displayed. Now we have a number of streamers who do ATC. You can see the scope that they're looking at, the radar scope, uh, or just have a listen in. Skep did a great... Um, introduction to it there last week or the week before and just on discord she said hey guys i'm going to be flying here do you want to jump on and have a look it was brilliant because every area you fly to there's always going to be local nuances things are going to be slightly different um, and it's important that you learn the little differences of each one by and large they all tend to follow the same trend there's just some local differences anyway some controllers stream the sessions live on twitch uh, and understanding the controller's task and how it relates to you as a pilot well, it'll help you work together more effectively. The primary radar target shows only range and bearing. The transponder enables much more information to be displayed. So I've included a picture here where you're looking at, you know, an aircraft blip on a screen. However, once the transponder is activated, well, you can see a lot more information. Altitude reporting, you've heard of that before. So Euroscope, note the airspace boundaries, the range rings, our, uh, the nav aids and fixes, extended center lines and green data tags show the aircraft details. This is what controllers look at, lads. Isn't that mad? Dreamy, sleepy, nighty, snoozy snooze. Jesus, Kean. Um, But yes, isn't it mad? That's what they're looking at, right? Um, mode A sends a four-digit code set in the transponder by the pilot. The pilot may set certain standard codes such as 7000 VFR or 1200 and not in contact with air traffic control in the UK or 7700 for an aircraft experiencing an emergency, for example. Don't go near those emergency codes on VATSIM. Alternatively, air traffic controller may assign a discrete four-digit code, known as a squawk code. Either way, the code appears on the controller screen, along with the position of the aircraft, which forms part of the data tag. So they'll say, oh, hey, here's your man, you know, November 235 or Echo India Tango Tango Mike. He'll write me down with a squawk code. That's the number. Squawk 4650. Okay, 4650. That's what they see on their screen, right? 
These images are from real world radar screens show the difference between the way the same aircraft is displayed in a primary and secondary radar. The target on the top is the aircraft displayed in primary radar only. And notice that only the information available to the controller is the aircraft's position, the green blip at the front. And an indication of speed of movement from the orange trail behind, which shows where the target was previously. You can see it moving there. It looks interesting. Many transponders, in addition to the mode A four digit code, also have a mode C, which also transmits altitude information. In most cases, both mode A and mode C altitude information are transmitted simultaneously. Altitude reporting mode. Therefore, this type of transponder may be referred to as mode A and C. Now, VATSIM transponder simulation is simplified from the real world, and on VATSIM, transponders can only operate with standby or in AC. There is no facility for mode A only. You'll see it mode C or mode Charlie. All right? 7700, hello there. <laughs> If a flight plan has been filed, it may be possible for ATC uh, computer to correlate or match up the mode A code with the data from the flight plan. This enables a much more detailed data tag to be displayed, including details such as the aircraft call sign and ground speed as calculated by the radar. And you can see it kind of here. So the TOM is the aircraft, the A. Anyone know what the A might mean? Because there's an arrow saying it's going up or going down. And then you have G227. Anyone have an idea what those are? How often do I need to request airspace clearance on VATSIM just in ATC coverage areas? What do you mean, Quart? Got Border Collies, where can I find the VATSIM client? So we use vPilot. So if you scroll up in the manual, Got Border Collies, it'll tell you. Okay, so the, T the TOM245 is the call sign. A56, that's the altitude. Yeah. G227, ground speed. Yeah. Ground speed. All right, you're getting it. Good stuff. VATSIM correlated data tags. The data of the tag at the left is from Glasgow Radar and it shows the aircraft's call sign of Thompson 245. Current altitude 5006 and it's descending. The ground speed is 227. The tag on the right is from Gatwick's director radar screen and the layout is common to most London airfields. The call sign Ryanair 2A Tango Whiskey is shown on the top line. Whilst the second line shows the present altitude, FL86 and descending, right, 8600. Destination KK for Echo Golf. Kilo Kilo or Gatwick and cleared level in orange is cleared to 8,000. This is nice to know information. It's not essential for us yet. This is what controllers have to do. This is what Skep has to do. All right. Transponder operation, right? The image below shows a typical transponder panel, which might be uh, encountered in a light aircraft. Different aircraft have different types of models of transponders with a slightly different layout. For instance, many modern transponder have a digital display with a keyboard to help enter the code. But the basic principles are much the same. There will be means to select a four digit code and a mode selector. So this happy little fella here, but we're used to seeing this. We can see off, standby, on, altitude, test, ident. And then we have a couple of ways in which we can change the code. Off, the transponder is electrically powered off. Standby, the transponder is electrically powered and it's ready to use. However, it's not uh, responding to any interrogation pulses and it's not sending information. Putting it in standby, it's ready to rock, yeah? On, if you put on to on, the transponder is on and it will send the mode A four-digit code only, but not any altitude information. Not applicable on VATSIM, you've got to fly with mode Charlie. But it's interesting to know, if it's just on, you're just giving your code. Uh, the transponder, if you flick it to ALT or altitude, it's powered on and it'll send both mode A, which is the four digit, and mode C, which is the altitude. This is the normal operating position. Test, a position used to test the transponder is operating correctly, not applicable on VATSIM. And then IDENT, a button used to send a special signal which causes your aircraft's target to bloom or otherwise be highlighted on the controller's display for the purpose of confirming your aircraft's identity only to be used when specifically requested by the controller. They might ask for you to say, please ident. Think about it. A controller is looking at a busy radar screen. There's tons of information here. And if they say to you, ident, when you press the button, ident, it'll flash on the screen. All right, that's what they mean by ident, identify. All right. 
How are we getting on so far, lads? Are we winning? I hope so. Transponder codes. Each digit of a transponder code can range from 0 to 7 inclusive. This gives a total of 4,096 unique combinations of codes. Whilst in many cases you may be issued a code before departure and retain this code all the way to your destination, it's also possible for various reasons that you may need to be assigned a new code if you wish to transit between different ATC centres, right? Jeffrey B has subscribed, God almighty, like one metric year. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. Cheers. Ah, so just be aware, if if ATC in one area give you a squawk code, let's say we're, we're leaving a controlled airport in Shannon and they'll say, you know, squawk 0404. Yeah, squawk 0404. And we're flying. When we're leaving the airspace and there's no more control, no more ATC, they might say, monitor Unicom uh, on 122.8, squawk VFR. We know VFR squawk frequency or code in Ireland is going to be 7,000 and much throughout Europe. In America, it's going to be 1,200 or whatever. We'll learn all the different codes. But when they tell you to squawk VFR, that's what they mean. So we're now squawking via 4 and all of a sudden we're now approaching someone else's airspace that we need to transit to. Well, we call up ATC and we say, hey, November 235 Romeo Mike is at this position, at this altitude. Can I enter your airspace? And they'll say, sure thing. Squawk 1661. Squawk 1661. And they might say, and I dent, right? So that's why they might change it for you. There's other reasons as well. If ATC might get, if you know, if you were if you were looking after, if you were looking after an arrival area at one airport, and you know, if you're if Skep was looking after someone in Switzerland, right, and you know the lads out of Dublin sent eight or nine of the aircraft to the same destination with very very close squawk codes, well that's going to be difficult. So the control you can change the frequencies, but you don't change it. The controller will tell you what to do. Unless, of course, there's an emergency, but we'll deal with that some other day. Andy Brown! Sweet lamb of suffering. Jesus, did you see what he did? He gifted five tier one subs, look. Jesus, Andy. Thank you very, very much indeed, man. Cheers. God almighty. And this is why I do IFR. <laughs> Actually, yes. There's, there, it, it, it can be more straightforward. Anyway, the code is selected on instruction from air traffic control. The standard word used over the radio to indicate a transponder operating instruction is called... Squawk, right? Squawk. So for instance, an instruction to squawk 4325 means you should select code 4235. Likewise, an instruction to squawk mode Charlie means you should select mode C, altitude reporting, function on your transponder. All right. Does that make sense to us? Do we understand it? Quart says, yeah, IFR seems easier. You'll see where the differences come in, right? My experience, VFR is a little bit more difficult, but it's, I think it's, it can be a little bit more fun. A little bit. Depends on the aircraft. Anyway, this gives you an idea. In real life, not all aircraft are fitted with transponders, and therefore both primary and secondary radar information is generally displayed and available to the controller on the same screen. However, VPilot and other VATSIM software providers, all aircraft with mode Alpha, code number, and Charlie have transponder capabilities. And the reason why they have that, if you look at the VATSIM client, yeah? If you look at the VATSIM client, not the VATSIM client, sorry. If you look at the VPilot client, yeah? See this guy here? Connect. You have a mode C button. You have a mode C button. All right? So it does it anyway. And there's a setting in here. You can actually say, hey, listen. um, Miscellaneous. Automatically squawk mode Charlie on takeoff. Just in case you forget. The client application will do it for you. All right? The, the client will do it for you. Anyway, in order for a VATSIM controller to see your secondary data, such as squawk code, altitude, call sign, and so on, you must select mode C on. On many airports, it is required to select mode C throughout your flight from pushback to engine shutdown. Check the B4, the VATSIM code of conduct. You need to check with VATSIM on some of that. Local controllers will tell you. The old story here, wherever you're flying, get familiar with the area. Just get familiar with it. Jump onto VATSIM as an observer. Sit through a little bit of time listening to what they're saying. Maybe message the controller, right? Hey, I've got a couple of questions. They'll point you in the right direction if they can't help you there and then. It's all about getting used to the area. Uh, but yes, now, if, where's this I'm saying? In many cases, uh, 
The selections you make in your aircraft will be linked to your pilot client, but if in doubt, always check your pilot client, which will have its own inbuilt controls. The pilot client on vPilot, note mode C and ident buttons are in the client itself, in case you can't access them through your radio in the sim. All right. Moving on. Uh, and even more recent development is the Mode S transponder. These advanced units are uh, often capable of interfacing with the aircraft systems can transmit or downlink a great deal of information about the aircraft for display by the controller, including the current indicated airspeed and selections which have been made by the pilots on the aircraft's autopilot control system, such as altitude, heading, airspeed, enabling controllers to uh, ascertain immediately whether the crew has entered the correct information and thus prevent accidental level uh, bus or other errors. Mode C, currently not available or fully simulated on VATSIM, but it is coming down the line. It's more applicable to the larger aircraft. All right. So how are we getting on now so far? That was just talking about the transponders. Don't worry if that's gone 100 knots over your head at speed, never to return. It's just getting ourselves familiar with this. It's like, hey, I remember hearing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Murph was talking. Yeah, we got it. You don't need to know it inside and out, guys. Don't worry. It's a slow process because there's a lot of information. But it's just to be aware of it. You guys can read this back. As I said, we'll go through it again next week. But it's just to give you an idea. There's 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 more than just flicking a switch on your transponder. And there's a bit of method behind it. Mode Charlie, mode Alpha. If you're going to be flying online, it's it's this is what you need to figure out. All right. So our next little thing is going to be the uncontrolled airports. Right. Uncontrolled airports. Things to avoid. Right. There are some time or there are some misunderstandings when it comes to flying at uncontrolled airports. It's because most folks, when flying online, just do what they think is correct when there's no ATC online. It's a logical consequence when nobody really talks about what to do and what not to do when no ATC is online or when flying to a genuine uncontrolled airport, airports that are not ATC controlled. When flying both VFR and IFR, it's important to keep in mind why you are talking on the frequency in the first place when there's no ATC. Why do you want to talk on a frequency if you're connected to VATSIM, but there's no controller, like why on earth would you want to do that? Right? Huh? I want to talk to Paddy down the road, it's important. I mean, he needs to get the shopping. You're right. you need to tell them what you're doing, right? Announcing intentions, correct, Ashley, correct. What are you doing? You know, you're on the ground at Shannon, there's eight or nine airplane around, uh, airplanes around you and you're saying to yourself, what the hell is this? Where's your man going? Ah, I'm in his way, right? That's why you talk online. Um, it's to enhance the situational awareness of uh, everybody in the area to keep everyone and everything going smoothly and safely. You need to let all pilots in the area know where you are, what you're doing and what you're planning to do next. Okay. With this in mind, let's highlight something a lot of pilots do that is not necessary and possibly annoying for other pilots. You do not need to communicate every single thing you do. Echo India Tango Tango Mike is scratching his left eyebrow and taxing Alpha. Then I'm going to break wind at Kilo. Then I'm going to sneeze into my right shirt pocket. Like you don't need you don't need to tell them everything. Keep the communication on Unicom just like you would if you were talking to, to, to the controller, right? So the spiel or the way you're going to say things is, you know, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172 at general aviation or on the ramp or if it's a bigger airport, southeast apron, whatever, you're going to know where you are, taxiing to runway 06 via Alpha. Well, you're letting people know who and what you are and what you're doing and where you're going. No, fair enough. If you're in the air, it's the same crack again. Hey, I'm here at this altitude with this heading. That's what I want to do next. Well, grand. That's what we mean by that. Okay. So you can coordinate with other traffic uh, if necessary, but keep your messages on the Unicom frequency short. Short, sweet, and to the point, right? Because we're going to be doing this now here in a sec. VFR communication for uncontrolled airports. When it comes to flying to and from uncontrolled aerodromes, the big difference between VFR and IFR. This is because flying VFR at uncontrolled aerodromes, it's actually quite common. It happens a lot, right? And there are guidelines attached to flying VFR with eight, without ATC coverage. However, when it comes to IFR, on the other hand, flying IFR at uncontrolled airports doesn't exist in the real world, at least to my knowledge. 
you can't land VF or IFR at an uncontrolled airport unless, of course, you have you know access to turning on runway lights and all this. But even if you do, it's uncontrolled IFR. Yeah, don't think so. We experience uncontrolled IFR flight in our simulator because not all ATC stations are online at the same time. Makes sense. Let us look at an uncontrolled VFR communication on the Unicom frequency. This is based on how procedures are followed on VATSIM and indeed in the real life. Have a read through the below phases and get acquainted with communicating on VATSIM without having ATC coverage. It's great to practice this and it tends to be easier and stress free uh, as it's mostly one way communication. This is mainly, this is all one way communication. So, for example, departing. When departing from an uncontrolled airport, Here's one for you, right? I'm going to ask you the question before we even read it. When we were at a controlled airport like Shannon, we had to ask permission to do what exactly? What did we have to do? Anyone? We couldn't just like tear off down the runway. Sure we couldn't. We had to ask some stuff. Start up, yes. Yeah. We had to request an engine start. Now, if you're at an uncontrolled airport, what do you do? There's no wrong answers. Don't be afraid to throw in something. But like, what do you do at an uncontrolled airport? You start your engine. You start your engine. I'm going to start me engines. And you don't even report it. You know, Shannon traffic. I'm starting me engine. <laughs> well, you just start your engine. Straight away, this is getting easier, right? So, let's have a read of it. Um, it's not relevant to other traffic. In the format below, you can read what the calls are during the departure phase of your VO4 flight. This is a fairly, fairly straightforward approach of what we're doing. Right, watch this. Shannon traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Cessna 172. Taxi... Cessna 172. Taxiing via the apron and Alpha to runway 06. Shannon traffic. What's important here? I've repeated the name Shannon Traffic twice. I've repeated it. Why is that? Any ideas why I, I start and I finish with Shannon Traffic? What if you suddenly jump on the radio and I'm in mid-conversation? How do you know it's relevant to the area that you're in? What if you're down the road in like, what's the other place in Limerick? Kuna is it? What if you're down the road in Kuna and you've tuned in and you can hear you can hear this fella talking I'm taxiing an alpha. Jesus we don't have an alpha. Right? The reason why you say Shannon traffic or any airport at the start and at the end is in case someone jumps in halfway Ah Shannon traffic. I know what he was saying he's talking to Shannon traffic Okay? So we know uh, where at start or end. Yeah Anyone who misses your initial call. If you join in halfway and there's someone mid sentence you know what area they're talking about. So, Shannon Traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172, taxing via the apron and Alpha to runway 06. Shannon Traffic. Okay. Now, our next bit. We've now taxied and we're holding short of the runway. Shannon Traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172 is lining up runway 06, Shannon Traffic. Now, all the while, all my... Uh, all my effort is looking out the window of the airplane. I'm looking everywhere for traffic, man. I'm just like, hey, just like, whoa, visual flight rules here. I'm checking everything. If there's an aircraft ahead of me, if there's one on short final, or there's one on takeoff, I'm watching everything because I got to make sure I maintain a safe distance. Yeah. Next up then, Shannon traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172 is taking off runway 06, heading north or north departure. You can break all these down your own way, but you're basically, you want to give people the idea, where are you going? So taking off runway 06, heading north, Shannon traffic. All right. And then Shannon traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, climbing to, usually given altitude, depends on the area again, climbing to 1,500 feet and is leaving the circuit to the north. Ah, he's leaving the circuit. Grand. So other traffic coming in. Hang on. we got a Cessna who took off from runway 06 turning north, but he's climbing to 1,500 feet. Inbound aircraft need to know your altitude. Why? Because they're going to enter the circuit. All right? That's why. Right. Now, any, or an important note to remember is that the departure phase ends when you are either leaving the circuit or when you are downwind of the runway. 
being downwind of the runway only ends the departure phase if you were staying at the same airport you departed from and you're planning to stay in the circuit. If that's the case, you can skip the last call in the format. It's also important to keep monitoring the frequency for other traffic in the area. This way you can communicate and coordinate to keep everything going smoothly and if you hear someone say that they're on final for the runway you are taxiing towards, you can decide to let other people or other pilots know that you will hold short of the respective runway. This way, the other pilot knows that they have the runway clear for landing and this is what's necessary for smooth traffic at these types of airports. Essentially what we're saying is, if you see a plane on final and he hasn't reported yet, well, you can jump on the radio. You know, Shannon Traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172. I'm holding short runway 06. Shannon Traffic. Grand. Your man coming in on final says, well, he's holding short. Laughing, right? It's brilliant. And then he might jump on and say, hey, Shannon Traffic, Piper, whatever, uh, is on a short final full stop. Shannon Traffic. So you're helping each other. We're only communicating to ourselves as advisories. That's all we're doing, all right? Now, the en route part, we're, we're airborne. Whilst flying en route during your VFR flight, it's sometimes necessary or recommended to make a position report when flying in an area where others are flying around you. Think of it when flying overhead at an uncontrolled airport or a busy area where other VFR traffic is flying. Think about that. If you're flying over like a famous landmark, if you're flying over, you know, the cliffs of mower or a visual reference point or just somewhere everyone will fly over well you're going to give them a position report because you're letting other traffic know in this area hey hey this is where i'm at right so you'd have a listen echo india tango tango mike cessna 172 overhead at orn moor 1500 feet heading northwest flying to connemara so you're just jumping on to say hey this is what i'm doing this is where i'm going i'm only letting people know you know, you might say uh, 10 miles to the south of Orne Moor. It's a position report, right? Keep in mind these position reports, they're not necessarily part of every flight you do. The recommended practice is to make a report on Unicom when overflying an uncontrolled airport without entering the circuit. Or when you think a pilot, as a pilot, you think it's necessary or it's wise to improve the situational awareness of pilots around you. You'll see that by our flight here now once we get planning into it in a sec. Uh, and then the arrival. Position reports are fun over oceanic. Yeah, I'm over the big wave. Huh? The arrival phase is the most complex phase of a VFR flight, uh, of an uncontrolled flight. The arrival, it's it's complex. You're 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 talking quite a bit, and the reason being is because you're now doing something dangerous, as in you're changing altitudes and you want to stop somewhere. You got to keep people very very alert. Not only are you watching the circuit for other traffic, you're also watching the approach. You got to make sure you're not going to stop and someone plow into you. You're also going to make sure you don't plough into someone else who's on the runway who wants to depart. It becomes busier. But it's grand. It's grand. We have to co uh, coordinate with traffic in the area, in the traffic circuit, on the ground, for you to arrive safely at your destination. This means that there are quite a few calls to be made on the Unicom frequency during this phase. The purpose of each call is to let everyone in the area know what your position is and at the time of the call, uh, what you're going to be doing next. Cliffs of Moor, Murph. <laughs> Giffo. Cliffs of Moor. Up the dubs. Um, so we'll be saying, right, Connemara traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east at Furbo. Now, Furbo, you might say, what? Huh? Furbo is the name of a town village in Galway. It's a visual reference point. I'm over Furbo, right? I'm at 1,500 feet for a full stop runway 05 at 1415 Zulu, Connemara traffic. Your initial call. So you're letting everyone know in and around Connemara Airport, hey, you got a Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east, currently flying over Furbo at 1,500 feet. Well, they want to do a full stop landing on runway five, and they're going to be here at around quarter past two. That's all that is, all right? You're now getting closer. Connemara traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike is a 172, entering the circuit from the north, joining downwind at 1,500 feet for a full stop runway 05, Connemara traffic. And you might be saying, how do we know what we're saying? Connemara traffic, our call sign the aircraft type. What are we doing? Well, we're entering the circuit. Where? From the north. Okay. We're going to join the downwind leg because we know what a circuit is, the downwind. Yeah. And we're going to be, we're coming in at 1500 feet or 1500. At the circuit altitude, we're going to descend in order to get onto that circuit. 
Yeah. So the next one is going to be Connemara Traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, Downwind, Runway 05, Full Stop. This bit is familiar to what we've done last week or the week before. Yeah. We're doing a full stop landing. So you've reported you're now on the downwind for runway 05. The next report, Connemara Traffic, you know, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, turning base, runway 05, full stop, Connemara Traffic. Okay. Your next call, Connemara Traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, turning final, runway 05, full stop, Connemara. And then once you land, Connemara traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, 17, Cessna 172, has vacated runway 05, taxing to GA parking, Connemara traffic. That's it. Done. Dusted. Right? Yeah, circuits are just, yeah. Uh, IFR and VFR downwinds can be very separate things. Yes, this is all VFR. This is a VFR flight. It's VFR start to finish. There's no uh, IFR capabilities on this. If the traffic circuit is busy and you're not sure where all the traffic is around you, you can do one of the following. So there's a way out, right? If the if the traffic circuit is busy and you don't know what's going on, you can make a call on the frequency, letting everyone around you know where you are and coordinate with others if possible. You can extend your downwind leg to make sure that everything is clear before you head back for base and then final. Or, as an extreme, you can leave the circuit completely to avoid an incident and then rejoin it later when you know it's safe to do so by avoiding other aircraft. So if the circuit is super busy, you can head off there for a while and let it all calm down. All right. These three options go from least to most dramatic. And on most flights, you might fly to almost an empty airport. Keep in mind, these options are available to choose from when it gets busy. Fair enough. Our lesson. Now, you're probably sitting there going, Murphy, I just, just you know, I, you're, you're good crack and all, but like, well, don't worry about it. There's a lot to take on board here. But once you start seeing things come together, you, it'll start making sense. There's a lot there to read, but we're, we're doing well. We're an hour and a half in. We're doing well. Now it's time to get flying, right? So we're going to talk through what this lesson is going to be. We have a very rough understanding of what's going on in the background. We've heard of certain names like transponder and circuits and all this sort of jazz, but we're going to start putting these into a little bit of practice. We're going to plan a flight and we're going to have a look at it a different, the different ways and the different information we need to plan a flight. We're then going to file a flight plan. That should be fairly straightforward. We just need to file our flight plan on the network. Then we're going to fly it. That's fairly straightforward. We know what we're good. We're going to know what we're doing because, well, we've planned it and we filed it. And then we're going to review it. All right. That's the next stage. So part one, planning our flight. In this section, we're going to be using Navigraph, Sky Vector and some uh, Irish Aviation Authority uh, charts to plan the location of the route, including the airspace. We're going to be using Venti Sky for the weather and we're going to use Volanta for ATC coverage. So we're going to plan our flight from Shannon to Connemara. We need to check for any restrictions with regards to airspace, altitudes, danger areas, points of interest, visual reference points, and other airports. So, first and foremost, we're going to bring up Navigraph. And why are we looking at Navigraph? Well, friends, Navigraph, outside of owning actual charts from the Ordnance Survey of Ireland, which are ridiculously expensive, and they come in giant pages, which are just friggin... You know what I'm saying? They're huge, right? Um, we're, it's, it goes without saying Navigraph is dead handy for this. Now, we can also use other charts. We can use, um, you know, the ones we were looking at here earlier on. For example, we can look at ChartFox uh, and so on and so forth. And that's something that Batsum isn't working. So we can have a look through here if we need to as well. All right? So we, uh, we can log in through Batsum. Hello. Chart Fox. So I, I want charts for Shannon, right? So if we were to load in charts for Shannon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we can say, right, okay, well, give me the give me the uh, taxi information, the aerodrome chart for Shannon. Let's have a look. That's a big 10 four, good buddy. How's your man? Yes, is here. Good evening. Welcome aboard, man. Good to see you. Paper. Yeah, the old paper, right? So here's a chart for Shannon. So we need to know, you know, the, the airport. And we can also get some information here. Runway directions, um, frequencies if we need it, 
so on and so forth. Okay. Now, if we want to fly from A to B, a, a phenomenal little website is Sky Vector. I don't know if you guys ever used it before, but I, I really like Sky Vector. Now, it's not going to give you the full... It's not going to give you the full VFR capabilities in Ireland. It'll give you some. It gives you a, kind of like a basic kind of a setup, but it's not giving you the full stuff. In America, it's absolutely incredible because it has included all the sectionals, right? It's included all the sectionals. Uh, turn off the gas prices. Uh, FBOs. Uh, so, for example, if we were flying in the States, well, hang on a second, we can actually see everything. Highly, highly detailed, right? Can you use those apps on Xbox? You don't need to use them as an app. You can just, if you have like a phone or whatever and you can track to see where it is you should be going for VFR flights, you're laughing. And the reason being is it's visual flight rules. Our time is going to be spent looking out the window. All right. So if we use Sky Vector, for example, well, we can see straight away. Oh, hang on a second. Why is there a big circle around the circle? What's all this about in a nutshell? Why is this here? Yeah. Well, you're going to see that this is denoting some sort of airspace, yeah? Which is from surface altitude up to 5,000 feet. Now, if you have chart access, it'll actually tell you uh, what the restrictions are on the airspace. And then because we want to go over to Connemara, well, you'll see, well, hang on a second, there's more airspace over here, right? Anyway, let's look at Navigraph. This will make life a little bit easier. So this is Navigraph. And this is using, uh, this is just using uh, our charts. So Shannon Airport resides inside Class Charlie airspace. It's Class C, meaning that there's a restriction on the ground up to flight level 24,500 feet or flight level 245. Then it extends. Charlie then goes from 2,500 feet up to flight level 245. Then it extends again from 3,500 feet to 245. That means in the initial uh, airspace we need you know we will be flying inside a control zone and that's part of a uh, you know the airport airspace and because we're uncontrolled we don't need to worry too much about this because well there's no control here there's no ATC here well, it's okay so our departure is going to be fine right so we're going to plan a flight we're going to be taking off from Shannon and we want to go all the way up to uh, Connemara so we'll start that we're going to click and we're going to say right uh, let's do a flight plan. So we're going to say, right, new flight. And our origin is going to be Shannon. So we're going to type in Shannon. We want to take off from Shannon Airport. Add to the route, yes. And our departure, we're going to put in our, uh, sorry, our arrival, uh, we're going to put in, or our destination, we're going to put in Connemara. Add to route. So here is a line direct, right? From Shannon to Connemara. Now we could fly that way. Of course we could. However, some of the limitations, now we can see that there is altitude here, so we can say, right, well, hang on, see these see these numbers? Four, five, four, four, four. What, what are these numbers for? Yeah, we're giving you an indication of altitude, right? Which means, if we're at ground level to flight level 245, well, no matter what we do, we're in a class Charlie. We, we can't not be in class Charlie. However, we can fly under the class Charlie once we get out to here, see? See the second bar? It says it. This is all Shannon Airport. Shannon, from 2,500 to 24,500, that's Class C. So that means, well, hang on. If we fly at 2,000 feet, we're going to be under the airspace. That's correct. And if we go even further out, well, it goes up to 3,500 feet, which means, well, we can fly along up to 3,500 feet and stay under. Yes, right? So what we want to do, we're going to fly from Shannon to Connemara. This is what we're planning. So we're going to start having a look around. And because we're VFR, well, if we have a look at our chart to say, well, hey, can we plan something interesting? See this weird, mad looking yoke over Dromoland Castle? It's it, it, That's called Dromoland Castle, right? Hey, Cornwall's good to see you. Dromoland Castle is a VRP around Shannon, right? But it also has this symbol, which is a, a broken circle with a triangle in the inside. And the triangle is hollow. That means it's a, uh, usually it's a reporting point or you would use this area to report a position, position report, but it's not a required one. You can if you want, it's optional. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to drag our little flight plan because I want to overfly Dromoland Castle. Okay, so when we take off from Shannon, let's have a look here. What's this? This is a big road. Now, 
this mightn't tell you the name of the road. So if you're ever stuck, again, you're going to spend a bit of time flight planning. So if we have a look at Bing Maps, for example, here's Shannon, yeah? If we have a look in here, so there's uh, Jermoland. So the road here, that's, that's the M18, lads. It's a motorway. That's like, that's like a highway to us, yeah? The M18. Okay. Well, we're going to follow up the M18, right? So when we take off, we're going to be departing runway 606. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to use the M18 as our visual reference point. Nice. Now, we can follow the M18 all the way up until we get to Orn Moor. Orn Moor is where I want to overfly. And the reason why I want to overfly Orn Moor is because there's an old airport up there. There's a disused airport in Orn Moor. Yeah. So if I just bring this gadget up here for a second and see where the, the old runway is, that's that's all closed now. It's closed to commercial flights. So we're going to fly directly over that airport. Okay, and that'll be known as Orn Moor. So let's tidy up our route here a little bit to make life easier. This is all part of the flight planning stages, right? So we can see, well, hang on, there's more visual reference points for us. What are visual reference points? Well, you look out the window. What are we looking at? Well, there's a railway. Yeah, sure, we could see a railway. There's also a town. The town of Ennis. Now, there's rules associated to V4 flight, how low you can fly and all this sort of jazz. We'll get into that in a couple of weeks. But essentially, we just want to make life easy. We're just planning a route. We're going to take off from Shannon. We're going to overfly Dromolan Castle. But we're going to be using the M18 motorway as a landmark uh, or as a visual guide the whole way. It should be fairly straightforward, right? Now, if we're going to be flying up this way, well, we can find, ah, hang on a second, Gort. We're going to overfly Gort. Why? Because we're going to stay on the M18. We're going to keep on the M18 until we're going to go up to Orn Moor. So if we look at the roads and where they break up, we know that once we get past Gort, when we look out the window and we see the town of Gort, we know we're going to be doing a bit of a course correction and we're going to follow on the other roads. Now, if we look at this, this is the M18 going this way. Have another look at the map and we'll say, right, the M18 goes up and it turns into what? What's this road? The N67. Yeah, we can do that. We want to go to Orn Moor. So it's the N67. It's over Claren Bridge and all this into Orn Moor. So we can have a look and say, right, yeah, yeah, that's grand. That's the way we're going to fly. Now, once we get to Orn Moor, we could fly directly over Galway City. We're not going to. The reason being is, well, you can see here, there's an obstacle. You need to be careful of that. Danger, right? So what if you go and have a look here at Loch Carib? Okay, well, let's fly over Loch Carib. Something like this. We don't need to go too far out. But again, if you look at how the lake is and you can see where the entry points are and you can see roughly the shape, well, that should be easy to identify in the air. We're flying over that. So we'll say, hang on, we're going to be at the, the south of this lake. We're going to see this weird looking alcove thingy. Yeah, we'll know where we are. All right. Finally, we're going to do another uh, visual reference point and that's going to be the town of Furbo. We want to fly directly over Furbo. Bearing in mind, we can see that there's going to be windmills out our right window. We're going to overfly our train uh, railway. And we're going to see kind of Galway City on our left. And then we're heading out to Furbo. And then we're literally following on the coast down to Connemara. Okay, perfect. And that's it. That's our flight. We know that when we're going to be leaving the control zone of Shannon, which is uncontrolled, so we don't need to worry about clearances, um, we will be flying at an altitude roughly of uh, 1,500 feet, give or take. Give or take. We're kind of going east, then we're kind of going west. So we can probably go 1,500, and then we can climb to maybe 2,500 if we want to get very predictor. We don't need to. We're just kind of cruising along this way. All right? So that's what we're going to do. So are we all clear at that? You'd also be reporting Crusheen uh, on the zone boundary out, which would be up here. Yeah. Yeah, so you have, there would be um, published reporting points around Shannon when ATC are on. You'd be saying, hey, I'm now at this area. We're dealing with this as uncontrolled. We don't need to worry about it for now. But when we start doing controlled to uncontrolled, this is when we pick it up. So our flight tonight, we're going to take off from Shannon. We're going to follow the M18 motorway. We're going to overfly Dromolan Castle, or if we can see it in the sim. And then even though our flight kind of goes directly up here, we're pretty much just going to be hugging that motorway. We're going to use the motorway. We're going to keep to the left, keep to the right of it. The motorway is going to be on our left until we get to Gort. All right. That's what we're doing, lads. That is our flight. All right.
So with that said, uh, that's our plan flight or that's our flight planned. We're now going to have a look at filing a flight plan so we can use VATSIM and SIMBRIEF to complete it. If we use SIMBRIEF, SIMBRIEF, not the most friendly for a VF4 flight. So if we go to dispatch and we say, right, go into the dispatch system of SIMBRIEF uh, and you can see that we can do a new flight and we can start putting stuff into here. And you'll notice that this is pretty much going to be based on IF4, right? And if we put in, you know, a Cessna 172 as our aircraft, and it's going to now literally draw a line, right? So it's shown us if we we're flying instrument flight rules, that's where it's taking us. Okay. Um, it's not ideal for what we're trying to do because while well, we want to fly via four, we don't need to worry about an actual flight plan. But the reason why I want to show you this is it's it's going to pick uh, it'll automatically pick the capabilities of the aircraft, it knows what a Cessna 172 is. Why? It has a profile. Therefore, it's going to say your cruise profile, your descent profile, and it's also going to know what your speed is. Yeah? So you'll see it here, look. Uh, scheduled block time, uh, as in how much scheduled, blo scheduled block time, right? 055, extra fuel on board. It's going to give you all that information. It'll also come in with the selected route, and you can change some of these routes if you want to, right? But this is, if we were doing IF4, kind of the same route. We'll take off from Shannon. It's actually going to overfly us over to Molin because there is a waypoint there. Then it turns us left, up over Liston Drana, and then it's straight in. What we can do with this, we can we can save the flight, we can export it, we can do all this sort of wonderful stuff. However, you have other options uh, down here. Once you click on uh, generate the flight, once you generate the flight, well, it'll now post this onto VATSIM for you which is really, really handy, right? So we have this stuff down here, flight plan or pre-file on network. That's behind my head here. Look down the bottom, pre-file on a network. So if we show the details, it's going to say, right, you can do it on VATSIM, IVAO, Pilot Edge, or POSCON. So let's go to VATSIM. If this was going to be an IFR flight, this is how we're going to do it on VATSIM. See the way it's now completely updated, all of this? But bearing in mind, it's thinking that this is an IFR flight because it says it, it's an IFR flight. But here's the trick. You see, we can change this now because by picking the aircraft, you can see transponder, weight category, altitude, airspeed, fuel, and the equipment on board. That's kind of handy, isn't it? And you have other bits and bobs down here. Yeah. So red is going to be Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. So let's let's have a look at this. Let's change this flight to a VF4 flight. Call sign is Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. We are going VF4. We're a Cessna 172. Weight category is light. Equipment on board. It's already copied it in from uh, Simbri for us. So it's SFG in this case. Transponder is going to be uh, C. Departure is Shannon. Arrival is Connemara. Alternate, we don't need. Off the block time in UTC, 2120. Um, altitude in which we're going to fly, we're going to change that. We're going to say we're going to fly at 1,500 feet. Um, airspeed is going to be about 110. Fuel endurance, minimum two hours. And we can get rid of the route details. Our route details, that's what we can now put in. So we'll put in um, Dromoland, Dromoland Castle, right? Dromoland uh, Castle. M18. Gort, Ornmore, uh, Loch Carib, uh, Furbo, and then in. And we don't need to be that exacting. I mean, we're, we're just letting ATC know, hey, this is the gist of it, lad. This is where we're going. You don't need to put in every single possible one. Give them the extremes to say, hey, I'm going from here all the way up to there. And, and that's kind of where, that, that's enough. Um, and then that's kind of it. That's kind of it. Remarks, TCAS in brief. We can put it down. Uh, TCAS in brief. Don't need TCAS in brief. We'll put down, um, you know, twitch.tv slash uh, look at me mallet head, right? And I plan it. Error. Route must be entered. Can only contain alphabetic numbers. Ah, okay. So it didn't like this. It didn't like the dash. That's all. That's okay. Right. Uh, file that. Call sign must be get rid of the dash. Didn't like the dash. Now, right. Plan. 
Flight plan has been filed. Enjoy your flight. Sweet. Simple as that. Another way you do it is directly from this gadget here, the pilot client. In this case, it's vPilot. So what we can do, we can go flight plan, flight plan current. So we're going to say it's VFR. Departure is going to be Echo India, November, November. Destination is going to be Echo India, Charlie Alpha. Departure time Zulu is going to be 2100. Yeah. Time en route is going to take about 45 minutes. Fuel available, two hours, 30 minutes. Cruise speed, 110 knots. We know that's what the Cessna will do. And our cruise altitude, yeah, 1500 feet. What's our route? We can do the same crack again. It's the same route. So I'm going to copy what I just did there, right? And post it here. And then remarks, it's the same crack again. Uh, in you go. Now, what else do we need to put in here? That's all we kind of need for the moment, right? That's all we kind of need. Equipment suffix. Remember what this one is. We are going with slant alpha. Why? Because we got a transponder with GPS uh, with mode C. Equipment suffix is A. Voice is going to be send and receive. Now we can file this directly. We can fetch it from a server, right? We can load, save, clear, close. We can do all these wonderful things. We're going to file this puppy. Dish. Done. You're now filed, right? It's now filed. Now it's asking me here to do all this. If I want to connect to the network, call sign Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Type is a 172. And cell call, leave it empty. Connect in observer mode, connect. That's it, we're connected to VATSIM. All right. Now, I mightn't be able to see who's on, actually. We can look at Volanta here. Yeah, so I don't think we have any. Uh, Xpilot no longer supports that. Xpilot doesn't support what, Jeffrey? Uh, the model matching. Yeah, okay, so I'm using the wrong client. Disconnect. So I'll show you what, this is how I do it, right? Because I use, I use vPilot on another PC. So I'm just going to connect in this mode. Let's have a look, let's have a look. I need to open up my vPilot over here, and we're going to say connect. Echo India, Tango Tango Mic. No connection, connection. Okay, so we're connected up here now, right? No ATC active, only Dublin. Okay, well, we'll hardly pick up Dublin, we'll see. So that's the flight now planned, and it's now filed. Next up, lads, we're going to fly the flight. We're going to fly the route, yeah? Once our flight is planned, we need to create a flight plan and file it on the network. Now, we will not be connected to the VASIM network for this lesson, but we can still do the flight plan if we need to. All right. I think we said it was planned uh, to be yeeted on vPilot. It used to be able to file. All right. Okay. So next up is our flight. And there's a step-by-step -step instruction of what we're going to do. Same crack again. Stage one, obtain the ATIS. We complete our pre-flight checks, we turn on the battery and the radios, and we're using the inbuilt ATC and Microsoft Flight Sim, we tune into Shannon Airport ATIS information on 130.955. We take note of the information letter, if there is one. If not, you're just going to get the automated terminal information service, what the weather is doing. If it's not there, you've got to rely on a METAR. So you'd have to look up the METAR. Stage 2, engine start and radio frequency. As there is no ATC, we don't need to request an engine start or ask permission to taxi. We just need to alert other pilots of what we are intending, and we listen out for other pilots operating in the area so we are alerted to their intentions. We're going to start up our engine, we're going to check our temperatures and pressures, then we're going to tune our radio to Unicom 122.8, and we're going to monitor it for a few moments. When we're ready to taxi, we're going to transmit the following. So I'm going to leave this up off your hall, and we're going to go into the sim. So here we are in the sim. And we're going to jump into our little plane. Now, if I do this right, I'll turn on. I could probably turn on multiplayer. I will turn on multiplayer. So if you guys want to appear as well. Now, now remember, lads, just give each other a bit of space. That's all you need to do. All right. So uh, let's let's do our thing. So park and brake is on. Fuel shut off valve goes in. Battery comes on. Battery coming alive. We're going to put on our beacon and our nav lights. We're going to make sure our mixture is fully in. We're going to make sure our prop goes full. We're going to go fuel pump for a moment. We have positive, fuel out, and we're going to bring a mixture out, fuel in slightly. Nice. So what we're going to do, we're going to say clear prop. There's planes all around us, but don't worry. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll say clear prop, make sure our parking brake is on, and we're going to go for a start in the engine. So once we start, we introduce some mixture, and she should be good. Nice. Good end to start. Keep the RPM up at around 1,000. Alternator is activated. And avionics can now come online. Those are saying if there was ATC uh, and a VATS of ATIS, you would use that. 100%.
Okay. Now, let's say that we're going to listen to the Aedas. If there is one. If not, we can get a meter. I'm not using live weather for obvious reasons, so if I can get, if I want, I can get some of the information from this, yeah? So if I go into weather here in the sim, it's going to give me a breakdown, yeah? So we're going to see, well, temperature, that's okay. Humidity, that's okay. Altimeter is what we're after. So pressure in inches of mercury, 3019. 3019 is set. And if we need to get the wind information, winds are 060-ish at four knots. So we can kind of see that here now. So if we want to try and tune to the ATIS, this wasn't working for me the last day, so I don't know. Uh, 130 decimal nine or five five. I don't seem to be getting the ATIS. I think there's an issue. Uh, it might work. I don't think it will, though. Uh, sound. Where's it now? Uh, ATC. Yeah, that's on. Sorry. Went to assistance. User experience. ATC voice is on. Information Hotel 1000 Zulu. Okay, let's have a listen. So we have that now, right? Now I'm going to turn off the. Uh, I'm going to turn off them for me flight because I don't want them. Uh, so we'll apply and save and go back. Okay. So a couple of things we need to set up here. So I'm going to make sure that our computers are on. Let's have a look at our flight information. So our transponder. This looks familiar. Okay, it's digital, but it's fine. Standby, and we're going to squawk via four. All right. Now I'm also jumped on to the Unicom frequency, one two two decimal eight. So we're going to go one two two. Decimal eight. And we're going to pop that in there. Okay. So what I can do. Uh, I'm not going to connect on VATSIM just for yet. But just for now. But you'll, you'll get the gist of it. Yeah. So what I want to do. I'm going to monitor. I have the Discord voice channels open. So if you guys are flying. Hop on into Unicom. If you're going to be on Unicom. And then I'm going to start talking because I want to start flying here. All right. So we should be good to go. Shannon Traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172. Taxing via the apron and Alpha to runway 06. Shannon Traffic. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Taxi light comes on. Park and brake comes off. And we'll start moving. Test the brakes. And we'll get on the road. There's our Shannon traffic. Now, why is that coming through on Spotify? One second, I need to fix my sounds, lads. I need to fix my sounds. So, Discord. Uh, Discord. Should be that. And then, default. That's in very quiet. Yeah, it's quiet tonight. Okay, we'll see how that goes. So I've just heard another aircraft. or someone holding short? All right, okay. I stay aware of it. So if you guys are flying, come fly along. But just remember, try and maintain that separation, yeah? And we're looking around. Making sure there's no one in our way. And we're not getting in someone else's way. Why are you on that? One second, lads. Output music. No, output should be default. Let's see if this works. So we can hear there's someone taking off. 
And it's, 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 it's Unicom. We're just, we're, we're talking to ourselves, lads. Jump on in. Come on, give it a go. Don't worry if you don't get it right. Just do the best job you can. Read through the manual. You'll see what you got to say. And just see what you can get information-wise across. Maintain visual separation and maintain good airmanship. 100% epic. 100%. So our flight time is about 40 minutes here. We're not gonna we're not gonna go nuts. Just remember where it is we want to fly. We want to follow the N18, or the M18. We want to overfly Dromolan Castle. We want to get up as far as Orn Moor, right? So we, we got some stuff to do here. We got a little flight, and we're gonna monitor our flight here as well. Also, make sure that you're on Va uh, Valanta, because we're gonna be using Valanta to monitor our flight, yeah? Shannon Traffic, Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot is a C-172, taxiing to the apron and Alpha to runway 06, Shannon Traffic. One second, bios. I don't know why my audio is breaking. Output should be that. Wait, try that. Wait and patient, needs to throw Murphy a curveball. Right. Hopefully you're not, uh, sorry, uh, headphone users. The audio is doing a thing. I think we're sorted now. So before we get going here, I need to do a run-up, yeah? Sounds fine. Okay, sweet. Okay, so quick run-up here. Park and brake goes on. Mixture goes to Rich. RPM up. Okay, we're going to do a max test. So back on the right. There's a drop. Back to both. Back on the left. There's a drop. Back to both. She didn't cut out. Fuel pump on. Back up to 1750. Fuel off. We're looking good. All right. So transponder, we're good. Quick look out the window, make sure all is well. And we can taxi on a little bit here now. Come on, Betsy. Okay, so I'm going to be flying at 1,500 feet. So what I can do in my autopilot, I can put in 1,500 feet. Because I'll get an audible alert to say, bing, approaching altitude. Yeah. So we're maintaining all visual focus out the window. What's happening around us, right? We're listening to see is there other aircraft doing stuff in the area. Yeah. So we've all done this sort of flying before. I mean, this is straightforward, right? So as we're approaching the runway, well, we're departing runway 06. So we got to make sure there's nothing coming in. And we're going to make sure that there's nothing on the runway. Now I can see there's people down there. So lads, I will ask, if you're not taking part in the ATC side of the fence, just jump onto a different server. Because you're going to make things very confusing for other folks. You know what I mean? Or if you are taking part... Uh, it's runway 06 is the active runway. So before we get going, we're going to jump on and talk to Unicom. Channel traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, lining up runway 06, Channel traffic. Okay, so we're going to line up. Landing lights come on, strobes are on, transponder now goes to altitude reporting, or C mode as we like to call it, and we're looking good. Also go for a notch of flaps. Shannon traffic call of Alpha Mike Oscar November, Cessna 172, taxiing via the apron and Alpha to room 06, Shannon traffic. Okay, so we know there's something behind us, right? So we get ourselves onto the runway. I don't mind the other lads there in front of us because that's just that's not confusing at all. Uh right, okay, so we're ready to go here, right? Shannon traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172, taking off runway 06, heading north, Shannon traffic. Okay, ready for a departure. Mixture's in, power coming in. Let's boogie. Dreamy sleepy nighty snoozy snooze. Jesus! So, airspeed live. Air 60. Oopsie daisy. Time to pull the big switch, good boy. And this is very similar. Eric Flight is in the house. Welcome in, Eric Flight. Many thanks for the raid, dude. Happy Monday, guys. 
just like our VFR circuit, we're going to climb initially to 500 feet and then we're going to take a left turn. Yeah, it's the very same because we're, we're in the circuit, then we're going to leave the circuit. So we're coming up over about 200 feet. Go ahead and bring the flaps in. Watch our rate of climb, watch our speed as we're doing it. We don't want to go too fast. Easy now, Betsy, easy. Okay, so we're coming up in 500 feet. And then it's going to be a turn to the left. So at 500 feet. We'll start our turn because we want to depart to the north. So we're just getting an outer marker there. So we want to climb up to 1,500 feet. You can use autopilot on this if you want to make life a little bit easier. But generally when you're flying VF4, I mean, it's a pleasure flight really, isn't it? So we'll do something like that. And as we continue to climb, we're going to tell them that we're going to leave the area. Does that make it short circuit? <laughs> Absolutely. Eric Fight, you're very welcome aboard, my guy. Hope you had a great stream. Welcome in. Welcome in. If you guys don't already know, Eric Flight, real world pilot. Uh, and uh, an amazing accent. Love the accent. Uh, streams, of course, on Twitch. You're very welcome aboard, man. Okay, so we're now departing the area, right? So there's, like, that's what I'm saying, like, there's an aircraft, like, you just need to kind of, if you're doing the ATC stuff, lads, try and jump onto voice, yeah? Otherwise, you make it very confusing for others. Shannon Traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, climbing to 1,500 feet, leaving the circuit to the north. Shannon Traffic. All right, all right. So we'll take it for granted we've now left the circuit and we continue on. Now what you have on VATSIM, you have this kind of spatial degradation. So like you're not going to hear people on Unicom in Dublin. You're not going to hear them in America. It's it's based on the on the distance from your aircraft. It's pretty cool. We call it the New England accent. Baston. Baston. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. Okay, we're visual flight rules. So where are we looking for? Well, I can kind of see the M18 here below me, look. There she be. That is the motorway, the M18. And I can kind of see it up there ahead. Why my view is broken? We can kind of see it up there ahead. So we don't need to stick to any particular heading now. We're visual flight rules. And we want to be at 1,500 feet. So we need to descend here a little bit. So let's see. We're going to go heading to... Well, where does we want to go? All right. And we get ourselves trimmed out. Lower the power, the nose will come down. We're going to go autopilot on. We're going to say heading and we're going to say altitude. And we're going to arm it. Shannon traffic, Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot. That's now 172, lining up runway 06. Shannon traffic. There you go. So we can hear other aircraft behind us, yeah? All right. So we're just kind of cruising along now. I don't make ten four good money. It's a pleasure flight. Hey, Mad Murder, six months, man. Thank you very, very much indeed. Great to see you. Like to program is here. Good to see you. Hello there. Uh, hello there. Welcome in, Trez. So uh, we're going to kind of steady off here at 1,500 feet. Yeah. There is the M18. What should we be passing now? What should be very, very close to us? What can we see out our window? Well, I know roughly where Jamolan Castle is. In actual fact, if I look down, there's the golf course, and that's Jamolan Castle there, look. So that's a visual reference point. I've just flown over Jamolan Castle. Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot, Cessna 172, taking off runway 06, heading north, shutting on traffic. So I, I can now hear there's other guys behind me, yeah? This is pretty handy. And we've got a good few people flying. As I said, there's a lot of content with tonight's flight, but don't worry about it too much. We're going to be doing this repetitively for you guys just to get the grasp of it. But I'm now flying at 1,500 feet. I'm VFR. I'm squawking VFR. And I'm actually not in anyone's airspace. I'm below the Charlie airspace. At this stage, I'm below it. So I don't need certain permission here. I'm flying under that airspace. Yeah? Now... If you were flying into a busy uh, airspace, you could request special uh, requ uh, requests, as in, you know, 
fly following or a basic service, radar services, all that sort of jazz. But for now, no, there's no need. So I don't want to drift too far from the M18. Hey, Arch is in the house. Arch NDA. Welcome in, man. Southern traffic. Delta Echo Golf from your Foxtrot. Uh, Cessna 172 taxiing via the apron and Alpha to runway 06. Shannon traffic. That's perfect, guys. It's perfect. Shannon traffic. Golf Alpha my Oscar November. Cessna 172 is lining up runway 06. Shannon traffic. Perfect. So if we were to look behind us as we continue on our merry little way, right? I'm keeping an eye on the road there, lads. You can see where I'm looking at. My my uh, flight plan, if you like, in my head. Well, there's the M18 beside us, look. That's what I'm flying over. My entire plan here is to follow the M18. And, like, you do this in the real world. Real world flying, you use these visual reference points. In my case, it's the M18 motorway. Because you see it from a mile off, right? And you can see where it goes, look. It goes off and bands around and off she goes again, right? And where my aircraft is flying is grand. When you're on the likes of VATSIM... Shannon traffic, Sierra Echo, Gold Tango, Foxtrot, Cessna 172, climbing to 1500 feet and leaving the circuit to the north. Shannon traffic. Perfect. Right. So as I'm flying here now, well, there's other traffic around me. I don't know who they are because, you know... I... Allow myself to introduce myself. I love that. Muse fan, thank you for the shout out. Uh, Shannon traffic, Gulf Alpha Mike. Cessna 172, taxi in Var Apron and Alpha to runway 06, Shannon traffic. Shannon traffic, Gulf Alpha Mike, Oscar November, Cessna 172 is taking off runway 06, heading north, Shannon traffic. So you get the idea. Now where I'm flying now, I need to, can I find Gort? Well, I know Gort is over here somewhere, yeah? Yeah, we're gonna fly up towards Gort. So we're following on the N18, but you see that the M18 turns to the right here a bit. So we're gonna turn to the right, yeah? This is the freedom you have with VFR. I mean, you're just, you can arse around whatever you want, wherever you want to go. You just need to be aware of the areas you're flying into. Starting off on VATSIM, flying in uncontrolled airspace away from any class airspaces you know you stick to echo or golf or whatever and um, you're you're kind of laughing you could just do what you like pretty much you know within reason so it's actually pretty pretty nice hulk yeah this is the the boris sound pack it's awesome really really nice so again looking out the window well, there's the m18 and our next visual reference point is going to be Gort. We should have just passed Ennis. And if you look out the window, well, there is a big built up area behind us. Look, there's Ennis. Yeah, it's a huge built up area. So, a town, city, or village, well, they're visual reference points. We just need to get used to where we're flying. Yeah. Now, the separation that we have here, it isn't too bad. Like, ideally, in, in you know, you'd want to be keeping a lot more distance than that. So, who's flying with us? You can see the, the distance from the other guys. I mean, it's nice flying along, don't get me wrong. Just maintain a safe distance. If you were VFR, you could fly that sort of closeness, but it, in the real world, it wouldn't be mad to see it. It's all about keeping uh, distance. Shannon traffic, Golf Alpha Mike Esco November 172, climbing to 1500 feet and is leveling and is leaving the circuit to the north. Shannon traffic. So our next waypoint is Gort. We're flying at 1,500 feet. We're not in any uh, panic about airspaces. There's no controllers online that, we're, that we can see. Um, you know, we can monitor that over on VATSIM itself. And we're just cruising. Traffic, 249 Tango Mike. Cessna 172 is lining up runway 06, Shannon traffic. So we can still hear the traffic of Shannon. We're not gone far from it, yeah? But the idea would be then, once you start getting closer to your destination airport, you stay on Unicom. The reason being is, unless there is a controller operating out of that tower, well, there's no point tuning into his frequency. You stay on Unicom. Some people tend to get confused with that. We're flying to Connemara. Connemara has its own radio frequencies, but there is no controller there. Therefore, we stay on Unicom, right? As a rule of thumb, and this is, I always do this because you'll always get someone, 
it's no harm putting your COM2 and monitor COM2 into the airport frequency just in case a controller jumps on or the nearest center you can do these things at VATSIM you can monitor another uh, frequency it's really really handy but this sort of flying is exactly the way you'd be doing it on the network right there's an O in Connemara no it's pronounced Connemara I know this on good authority Connemara it's not pronounced Connemara it's Connemara them Galway lads epics, do you know what I mean? Or you can type the name of the plane in the chat so I can search. Boris Soundpack. Bodies! Uh, do you not get an alert if ATC comes online? If... <laughs> Epic fool. Damn it! Too wise! You could get an alert if you're on... If you're connected to VATSIM, you'll hear a boop. And it'll, it'll give you a visual alert to say, Hey, there's a controller online. And because we've already filed the flight plan, once that controller jumps online, they're going to know we're there, right? Like, hey, hey, hey I, I see what you're doing. Like, if a controller jumps on now... Been in traffic, Delta Echo Golf from the Foxwood. Uh, Cessna 172 is lining up, runway 06, Shannon traffic. Pretty cool, right? Now, our next visual waypoint. Here's the M18, look. We're still behaving. And we're looking for a town. The town we're looking for is called Gort. G O R T. Garth. Traffic Golf 249 Tanker Mike. Cessna 172. Climbing to 1500 feet and leaving the circuit to the north. Shannon traffic. Now, the reason why it's important to give a mention there of altitude, some places you don't have to. But it's 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 better information. Galilee traffic. NKR 54, a PBY Catalina, is en route to Connemara. Bring your airspace. Galloway airspace. Okay, so there is a Catalina somewhere within the Galway traffic. area. Delta Echo Gold for me, Fox Sword, uh, Cessna 170. And he's telling us he's heading up to Connemara. There's a PBY somewhere around Galway. Even though he's not talking to me, I'm now going to keep my eye open for that PBY. Why? That's a big machine. So you can see the way the voice procedure doesn't have to be bang on. It doesn't have to be bang on at all. That report was enough for me to say, hey, there's a Catalina somewhere in the Galway airspace region and he's heading over to Connemara. Now, it's not terribly important to me in relation to, you know, wake turbulence and all that jazz. I just need to be aware that there is a bigger aircraft, a warbird, in fact, um, you know, that's that's in the area somewhere. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for it. Did you say it was the Boris one? I did, Hulk. I did. It is your responsibility as a pilot on VATSIM when you're connected to the network, keep an eye to see if a controller jumps on. Because if they jump on, it's up to you to say, hey, Mr. Controller. You know? So Dublin Approach is on 121.1. decimal one. We'll hardly get it. Let's have a listen. One to one decimal one. Like it's super unlikely. Delta traffic, Delta Echo Golf Formula Fox Sword, uh, Cessna 172. Climbing to 1,500 feet, uh, leaving circuit to the north. Shannon traffic. So that's actual VATSIM uh, ATC now coming in. That's Dublin approach, yeah? Clear ALS, of course, 1 euro, right? We are reporting established on that side, clear on Now, do you guys realize how difficult that is to hear? They have signal degradation. I'm very far away. If I was in Dublin, that'd be way clearer. I would have heard it way much better. But it, it's simulating the different um, distances from VATSIM, right? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Right, we should be at Gort. We are at Gort. There's Gort, lads. 
Now we're going to continue on. We're going to do a left turn because we want to pass over the N70 odd, whatever it was. So it's a left turn. A little bit of a left turn. And uh, it's not north. It's slightly left of north. So it's going to be over, yeah, I'd say a good heading there of 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and we're going to follow in the main road. Look. Hey, there's the road there now. Hey, we're going to follow that one in. And where we're heading for now, we're going to keep our eye out. Where we want to... traffic. PY Catalina, 15 Hello. miles uh, uh, east of your station for full stop landing, runway 23. Okay, so he's going in on runway 23. Zero 05 would be active based on my weather, but that's okay. I'm going to be landing on runway 05, but that PBY, he's miles ahead of me. He's now starting to do his landing into uh, Connemara, so I don't need to worry about him just yet. 05 is what I'm going for. Now, what's important here, lads? Well, we need to obviously research the airport we're flying into. So if we ramble down, we're now in the en route part, and we've already done a report over Dromoland. Yeah? Uh, sorry, we've already known that we've flown over uh, Dromoland. We're going to do a position report at Oran Moor. When we overfly Oran Moor, we're going to say, hey, we're at Oran Moor. Then we're going to be heading out toward Loch Carib. But here's something important, right? We're going to say overhead Oran Moor at 1,500 and try and get in the habit to say 1,500. I'll focus more on the pronunciation and how you type them in a lesson or two later. But 1,500 feet, it's too close. It's too... It's in, in Europe, it's always 1,500. 500. It's to make sure you're being very, very clear. All right. Uh, now, just to give an idea, the chart or lack thereof of Connemara, we're going to be doing an entry into the circuit at roughly a 45 degree angle. That's perfect for joining the circuit. Why? Because on Connemara, it's a right hand circuit. It's a right hand traffic pattern from runway 05. Therefore, we're going to be joining on the down wing leg. Then we'll turn right base, and then we'll turn right again on final. That's what we're going to do. Galway traffic, helicopter, Echo India, India, Charlie, Delta, departing UHG, rooting for Shannon. So, that's important. Helicopters, slower moving, different altitudes, or in some cases could be faster moving, but we got to keep our eye out now for a helicopter. We now know there's a helicopter taking off. The code he gave us is University College Galway. Chances are that's a medical aircraft. Priority usually will be given to these guys. He's heading to Shannon. Hmm. So if he's heading to Shannon, he's going to be coming down our way. So we now need to keep our eyes out there. And we will be doing a position report. If we think it's handy, we can let him know now. To say, you know, Galway traffic or Ornmore traffic or... You know. Go ahead, traffic. Echo Charlie Delta, estimate Canvara in four mic. Go ahead, traffic. So he's heading out to Canvara and then down. So we, we better shout on there, right? Go ahead, traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172 at 1,500 feet, 10 miles south of Orne Moor, and will be turning west over to Connemara, Galway traffic. So I've now given my position. I've told other aircraft, hey, this is where I am. This is my altitude. And this is where I want to go. So Epic, who's flying the chopper, now says, ah, there's a Cessna about 10 miles south at 1,500 feet, and he wants to head west. I'll keep an eye out for him. You're just letting people know what the crack is. That's what this is all about. That's what it's all about, lads. It's a small bit of drift. Or and more is dead ahead. I can see it from here. So you can see that, hear that signal degradation? Echo Charlie Delta climbing for 2,500 visual with the uh, circus. So he's out the window there. We can talk to him if we need to. Call the Falcon Mike Oscar November 172 overhead Oran Moor at 1500 feet heading northwest flying to Connemara. Almost perfect. Just remember to repeat the area that you're talking about, yeah? 
Just in case I jump on. Uh, all right, disconnect my bats in there for a minute. So we're holding 1,500. Epic already reported us in sight. He's no longer a factor we need to worry about. There he goes. He's climbing altitude. He's nowhere near us. But you can see how important it was to say, hey, there's no controllers here. This is just us. Yeah? It's just us. How are we getting on so far? Come and as I said, Epic. November Kilo Romeo 54, turning final for said, runway 23. Kind of traffic. Okay, so that's that Catalina is turning onto the final um, for runway 23 at Connemara. He's about to land. Now, we can always throw a spanner in the works. Hey, go around. Ah! Right? Uh, expect the unexpected here, but it's a lot of fun. This this is a lot of fun. And, like, doing this on Vatsim, once you plan your flight outside of the control areas and airspace, you're just talking to other pilots. Well, you're actually now flying on Vatsim. Charlie Alpha November Oscar Echo holding short runway 06 at Alpha. Okay, so what's our visual uh, reference point out the window now, lads? That's Orn Moore. It's the old Galway airport. It's not in use. We're going to overfly it. But this is where we're going to do a position report. And that's according to our lesson here. Yeah? So as we approach, uh, where is it now? We remain on frequency and we level off. We will announce a position Colorway traffic, Echo Charlie Delta, Beam, Convera, Visual with the uh, opposition traffic. Colorway traffic. So there's Epic, he's down at Convera, and you can see the oncoming traffic. He's just letting them know. So he's flying close to someone, he sees them. So if you're flying up, you'll say, oh, wait, what was that? All right. So we will announce a position report on Unicom at this location, and we're going to transmit the following. So this is what it's going to sound like. As I unmute myself. Echo India, Tango Tango... I said it wrong. I said it wrong. Galway traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike. 172. Overhead Oran Moor. 1,500 feet. Heading northwest. Flying to Connemara. Galway traffic. Now, you don't necessarily have to say Galway traffic because what well, the airport isn't in use. Local traffic? Local traffic is going to be anyone on, the, on, the, on your frequency within a certain distance. So, you could repeat it just to say... Uh, Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a 172. I'm overhead or and more, 1,500. I'm heading northwest, flying to Connemara. That's it. I've now told everyone in the area what I am, where I am, where am I going. So that's over the airport at Connemara, at Galway, sorry, or and more. And now we're going to head up to Loch Corrib. Remember the lake? Well, you can always see the lake. That's where we're headed. So we're going to just kind of skirt the very base of that lake that's where we're heading to next okay yeah you could you could use fists or lars you could but for this you really don't need to you could say shannon control you could you know what i mean you can say all of these things but you don't really need to ah an area is helpful rather than local an area is always helpful yeah uh, on an uncontrolled airport with no wind, who decides which runway is active? The METAR. The METAR. Or, um, if the airport, if there's no wind reported, and you're at an airport and you want to take off, pilot's choice. Never go against traffic, though. So you got to be careful. You would always listen in. Monitor what's happening. If you're the only pilot out there, it doesn't really Shadow matter. traffic, Charlie Alpha, November, Oscar Echo. Cessna 172 climbing at 1500 feet, leaving the circuit to the north. Shannon traffic. That's really, really good. Guys, your voice procedure is on point tonight. And like, as I said, there's lots to go through here. We're going to keep doing this. If you're sitting there thinking, Murph, you're not going too far. Trust me, this will be fine. Circuits was way harder than this. This is just a step by step by step process. Just like what I did with the last couple of lessons, I threw an awful lot at you. We didn't need to learn it all there and then. Our focus is completing the lesson. Because once we understand what some of the words we're talking about, like transponders and, you know, equipment suffix and all this sort of jazz, it, it just becomes easier through repetition. That's what this is going to be. It's true repetition. Like, we're going to do an uncontrolled to an uncontrolled Connemara again. Connemara traffic. November Kilo Romeo 54 is clear of the runway at this time. Taxi to parking. Sweet, perfect. So we now know runway is clear. Yeah. The next 
well not the next but in in a couple of more episodes we'll start then from a controlled airport to an Sean, uncontrolled traffic Cessna 172 is a hold show of runway 06 Sean traffic we'll go from a controlled airport over to an uncontrolled airport then we'll do an uncontrolled into a controlled and then we'll start doing controlled to controlled once we have all that done we'll probably do it cross country so we'll take off at a controlled land at an uncontrolled take off from the uncontrolled and then land at the controlled right and then we're going to look at our IFR as in we'll start what the difference is going to be with the IFR stuff and then we'll progress onto some of the USA stuff right North American rules but I would think by then some of us not all but I think some of us might be feeling a confident to give it a try on VATSIM something like this you're off the radar so to speak you're only listening out to other aircraft on Unicom it's quite safe and you plan a route just like what I've done even if a controller comes on now we're below any well we're actually clear of anyone's airspace but you're below the main class C airspace we're not going to get spoken to or given out to we're, we're outside of the airspace so you kind of have that confidence to say well hang on a second I can literally go flying do what I want and behave and no one's going to give out to me yeah pretty much there's Galway City to our left Galway traffic Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot is a Cessna 172 overhead or on more at 1500 feet heading northwest flying to Connemara Galloway traffic now here's the beauty thing there's no labels for there are no labels in the real world now an aircraft has just reported themselves over or more i'm looking out the window down traffic cessna 172 i can't see them. it's taking off on runway 05 down traffic so if i want to zoom into or more can i actually see an aircraft there you guys see anyone there i can't see anyone there if i turn on the nameplates you'll probably see them instantly there he is but the sim has limitations. If this was VATSIM traffic, you'll see them miles away. Hey, Zybot, good to see you. Infidel Fireman is in the house. Welcome in, man. Good to see you. Epic Fool said, read my last, you bugger. Sorry, ah, oh, Jesus, Epic. What did I not do now? Hang on. Not sure I've spotted Murph, but Kozaki completed the flight on VATSIM. Oh, no way. Well done, Kozaki. That's awesome news. That's fantastic news, man. That's great. There, technically, there you go. A VATSIM flight under your belt. That's that's something. Your first VATSIM flight. It doesn't matter if it's controlled or not. You know what I mean? Right, we're over Furbo. We need to talk to Connemara. Are we ready? Connemara traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172. 10 miles to the east at Furbo. 1,500 feet. Full stop, runway 05. In one five minutes. Connemara traffic. Okay. So, now you could say, well, you could really give them a time, ideally, because you're letting people know, oh, by the way, I'm headed in, right? That kind of depends, too, on some areas. But I'm letting people know who are in the area of Connemara Airport, hey, I'm a Cessna, at 1,500 feet, I'm at Furbo, and I'm heading into land on runway 05. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, was in flight dispatcher school. Infidel, dude, you have... You, well, you had huge news recently. Didn't you pass? Charlie once. Didn't get that, lads. Whoever that was. Golf Did you? 249 Tango Mike. Cessna 172. Overhead Oromore at 1,500 feet. Heading northwest. Flying to Connemore. There you go. Connemara. Don't worry, lads. I'll pick even more difficult names <laughs> we're going to knock a negotiable you know watching you from the ground good man yourself Kazaki okay so I'm going to watch my speed here now I could be descending a little bit closely because I want to join the downwind and if I want to join the circuit well I got to be at the circuit altitude if I can't find it well I've included the chart here the circuit altitude if you look runway 05 transition level 5000 okay circuit height is 800 feet QFE basically means height above the airfield. QFE is 800 feet. Runway 05 is a right-hand circuit, and runway 23 is a left-hand circuit. Ooh, keep the traffic out over the sea, yeah? 
So, it, it's, it's going to start getting busy here. So I'm now cruising along here at me 1,500 feet. I'm going to key in 1,000 feet and I'm going to start ascending very, very shortly. In actual fact, I'll start a little bit of a descent now because I want to enter the airfield or enter the circuit, sorry, from a 45 degree angle. That's what I want to do. All right. Because actually, that's fantastic. Work Shannon here. Traffic, Echo, India, Charlie, Delta, Abeam, Ennis. 2,500 feet, Shannon traffic. There you go. So there's Epic flying around in his chopper. And if you guys ever jump onto Vatsim, right? Try <laughs> try reporting over Lineal. <laughs> Brilliant. Some of the Welsh names. And if you guys ever jump on to uh ever jump onto Vatsim, and you'll you'll hear Epic Fool. I mean he's he's one of the few that flies helicopters on Vatsim all the time. You'll hear him jump on, and it's pretty cool to listen to. Even just jump on, on uh, with observer mode, you'll you'll get the gist of things fairly quick. But this sort of a flight plan, that's why I chose it, based on an uncontrolled... Down traffic, Cessna 172 is at 1,500 feet and living circuit to the north. Challenge traffic. There we go, there's more inbound. Like, the next... Connemara traffic, Gulf Alpha, Mike Oscar, November. Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east of Ferbo, at 1,500 feet, full stop, run with 05. Connemara traffic. Lads, these are doing spot on. Um, what I was going to say there, it, when we do the lesson with ATC leaving a controlled uh, airport, that's when you'll start joining the dots because he'll probably give us an altitude or he'll tell us, you know, depart runway 06, not above 1,500 feet, VFR, report at Drumoland or something like that. We'll get to that in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Helicopters are a nightmare for controllers. Epic fool, you stay put, mate. <laughs> Some of these comms are so silky. Yeah, they're doing really, really well. And again, it's a matter of we'll keep practicing, practicing, practicing. It's if anyone feels, and I've said it loads of times, but if anyone is feeling a little bit under pressure here that we're, we're moving too fast or it's just too much to take in, don't worry. We will all work on this together. This is pretty much a full demonstration of what we're doing. And the reality is this, lads. I didn't need to do a full demonstration on my own. I was able to demonstrate this whilst we have some people flying with us. That's amazing. I wasn't able to do this the first couple of lessons. Now we can. So don't worry. We will be doing this over and over again. And we'll learn just one route. Which means if you ever do want to jump onto Vatsim... Well, you're going to know how to do this one flight. Put it in the bag. Connemara you can do this. Sierra Echo, Golf Tango Foxtrot, Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east at Furbo at 1,500 feet, coming in for a full stop runway 05. Connemara traffic. Okay, now she gets dis uh, now she gets busy. Watch her speed and watch her altitude. Connemara traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike will be entering the circuit from the east, joining downwind runway 05. Connemara traffic. That's us, lads. So we're about to come in. So we're going to descend here a little bit. Connemara traffic, Golf 249, Tango Mike, Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east of Furbo at 1,500 feet, full stop, runway 05 at 1415 Zulu, Connemara traffic. There's Shan traffic, Cessna 172, two miles to the east of Ennis, Shan traffic. Delta Echo Golf, Romeo Foxtrot, uh, Cessna 172 overhead or more at 1,500 feet, heading northwest, flying to Connemara. Connemara traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172 on the left downwind for runway 05, full stop. Connemara traffic. So we're on the downwind. We're going to land now. So we're told them we're on the downwind. Yeah. Charlie Alpha November Oscar Echo Cessna 172 overhead kill curtain at 1500 feet heading northwest flying to Connemara.
So remember, the same crack again. We're on the downwind. Go back to your circuits. Okay. 45 degree angle. Turn right base. Start, start uh, descending. Yeah. Connemara traffic. Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Cessna 172. Turning base. Runway 05. Full stop. Connemara traffic. Panamara traffic, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, turning final, runway 05, full stop, Panamara traffic. Panamara traffic, Gulf of May, Oscar November, Cessna 172, entering the circuit from the east, joining downwind at 1500 feet. Full stop, from Z5, Connemara traffic. Connemara traffic, you got a Cessna 172. Short final, runway 05, full stop, Connemara traffic. Traffic, Golf Alpha May Oscar November, Cessna 172, downwind, runway 05, full stop, Connemara traffic. Connemara traffic, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, Cessna 172, vacated runway 05, taxing to GA parking, Connemara traffic. Look at the timing Connemara from Colonel Fork though. Sierra Echo Golf Tango Fox Road, Cessna 172, entering the circuit from the east, joining downwind 05, Connemara traffic. So you can see kind of mild traffic. it might get a little bit kind of difficult because you're saying to yourself, Jesus, there's so many people on this frequency. How do I do my thing, right? Look at that Catalina look. Look at the state of that. Miss Pickup. Don't be afraid. You're not going to butt in, but like you want to say, hey, I'm on a short final. You need to give a distance from the runway as well, but it, that comes later. When you turn final, you then say, hey, I'm on final or a short final or a one mile final or a five mile final, whatever. You need to communicate your intentions to the ground. All right. Jesus, Colonel Fork, 33 months at tier three. 33 and a third. Jesus. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. God almighty, my guy. What was the word I'm looking for? What do they call him? Man down? I don't need fuel tanks. So I'm at parking. I don't need to talk to ATC. HA8. Full stop, Connemara traffic. So at this stage, transponder's off. We're finished. Uh, landing, taxi. Connemara traffic, Sierra Echo Golf Tango Fox Cessna 172, turning base, runway 05. Full stop, Connemara traffic. Okay. So what I'm going to do Panama here... Now, traffic, Delta Echo Golf, Formula Fox Road, Cessna 172, 10 miles to the east at Ferbo at uh, 1,500 feet, full stop, runway 05 at 1415 pseudo Connemara traffic. So what I'm going to do here, rather than having nameplates on, we're going to be listening to ATC to see what aircraft are coming in. So we know there's someone in the circuit. We know that because they've reported, hey, I'm in the circuit. So you're now just, you're keeping an eye out. And you can do the same on VATSIP, right? But just to start... Call 249 Tango Mike, Cessna 172, entering the circuit from the east, joining downwind, runway 05, Connemara traffic. So I can see lights there ahead. It's harder to see. Now, what was the secret the lads told me? Sound traffic, Cessna 172 is overhead, God. Sound traffic. They said if you bring the time down to, like, dusk, you see Connemara lights a bit traffic, better. Sierra Echo Golf Tango Fox Cessna 172 on final runway 05, full stop for Connemara traffic. 
If a skeptic Anton who told me, get it down to, so you can actually see the aircraft a bit better from an ATC perspective, I can see an airplane on approach here. Five, taxi into GA Park and economy of traffic. And I can see another airplane over there, look. I can now see aircraft without name tags. Nine, Tango Mike, Cessna 172, downwind, runway 05, full stop, Canamara traffic. I know just by looking out, that's Echo 249er. It's Toto, right? 249 or 249er. That's where Toto is because he just said I'm on a downwind. I can see his lights way off in the distance, right? Also, I can see another aircraft here now on a short final. There he is. And I know this by listening to what the lads are doing. Isn't that class? Like, I know I know what's happening because well, I can hear them. Because I'm on a Unicom frequency. 249 Tango Mike, Cessna 172, turning base, runway 05, full stop, Connemara traffic. There you go. Isn't it pretty cool? Which airports? This is Echo India uh, Charlie Alpha. Echo India Charlie Alpha. So it's easier to see lights when not zoomed in. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? I can see the lights from a further distance when not zoomed in. I just, I don't know how good they are for you guys seeing them. But I will say this. This lesson, um, we're going to be repeating this. So fear not, lads. Fear not. Come on, traffic. traffic. See Sierra Echo. Tango Mike, Cessna 172, turning final, runway 05, full stop, Connemara traffic. And then they jump back. Connemara traffic, Sierra Echo, Golf Tango Foxtrot. Uh, vacated the runway uh, 05, taxiing to GA parking, Connemara traffic. Good job, good job. So an aircraft has vacated, the next pilot is coming in, he now knows, hey, the runway has been vacated. Nice, this is great crack. Couple of curveballs to throw at us soon though. But oh, the speed coming in is lively. Hope you devil you. Now if it goes all kind of, you know what I mean? If you're in trouble, right? Connemara traffic, Delta Echo, Golf Romeo Foxtrot, uh, Cessna 172, entering the circuit from the east, joining downwind runway 05, Connemara traffic. Lads, I can't get over how well you're doing. Jesus. It's amazing. Really good separation coming in. Amazing. You're communicating, you're clear. I'm able to follow you without even having to worry about it. I'm so impressed. These are absolutely brilliant, right? Uh, what is the Shannon 8 is frequency? Should be 130.9 or 955. Ice Man, it's in the book. It's in the book. Right. Once on the downwind, that's what you transmit. Land, vacate, and taxi. Let's go through these seven stages because I want you guys to practice this during the week and even into next weekend, right? So, stage one. So, we're in part three, the flight. Stage one, obtain your ATIS. Stage two, engine start up uh, and tune to Unicom. Then you're going to taxi by telling everyone, hey, I'm a whatever you are, and this is where I'm taxiing to. You have your departure. You have the en route flight. And again, I've put this in here so you can see what way we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, announce a position report on Unicom. Your arrival as we near the destination. We've entered the circuit from the east and we're going to join on a downwind for runway 05. Nice. Stage 7, land, vacate, taxi to parking and engine shutdown. That's it, lads. That's the entire flight, right? Also, uh, remember that you need to move your behind across the whole short line to vacate the runway. 50% of VATS and pilots don't do this correctly. Very well said, Skep. For you to be clear of the runway, to vacate, get your ass off the runway as quickly and safely as possible because, well, you're going to delay everyone else, right? Makes sense. So what we're going to do now is the review. Okay, well, we've done... This is stage four. We've done everything with our flight, or part four. We've done everything with our flight. Now we need to review it or re review it. Now I know that my circuit was absolutely she height. <laughs> I made a mess of it, but let's have a look, right? So I'm going to use Volanta, and Volanta is free for this, lads. So let's have a look. So this is where I took off from Shannon. You can see the route here. Look, I see the way I'm following on the N7 or the M18. Yeah. And you can change this to day or night mode. If you if you don't want night mode, if it looks easier. Uh, app settings. Uh, 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 where's the thing? Enable Discord rich show. Enable weather radar titan. How do, oh, Jesus. How do you change this now? Isn't there a way to do it? How do you change this? I wish it was on the N17. Stone walls and the grass is green. Isn't there a way to do the thing to do the oak? How do you change this into day mode? 
balls. There's a way to do it. I forget. It's not important. We can still see it, right? We're reviewing our flight. So it's going to show us, well, we took off from Shannon, yeah? And we followed up the M18. We flew over Dromolan Castle and we continued on up to Gort, yeah? Here's Gort. Oh, satellite. Sorry, map settings. Uh, day and night line. And we're going to go satellite and we're going to go 3D. Okay, super. So we went up by Gort. After Gort, then we flew up by Connemara. Sorry, over by Oran Moor. That's when we flew over the runway, see? See that? That's when we flew over the runway. Then we headed on up to Loch Carob. And we that's pretty much where we said we wanted to go. We're going to keep to the to the to the base, right? Um Hey Augie! The ATR is due out next Tuesday, tomorrow week. Uh then we flew out, we we kind of flew around Galway City until we went over the town of Furbo. There's Furbo, it's a village more so. And then we entered into the traffic pattern. So here's our 45 degree angle. You guys see that? Here's the runway. We did a 45 degree entry at a thousand feet and we flew on the downwind. And then my base, it was hard. It was more of a, just a circular turn, right? It should have been base leg and final. I just, I continued the whole thing around. It's fine. And then we got a, a decent touchdown and then we got off the runway. But here with Volanta, not only are you looking at this, right? But we can also check out our profile, climb and altitude profile. Yeah. Why isn't that working? App settings. But you not do a... It'll not show me the profile, no. Um, usually you get a profile of your flight when you review it it'll just show you where you climbed where you didn't but it's, it's effectively it's where you you know where you're looking at the route of how you flew it that's that's what's most important here right it's perfectly acceptable yeah but like you know what I mean you like you like doing a couple of sharper turns but anyway, this is why I'm saying, lads, Volanta is very, very good for this because it gives you this sort of feedback information. There are other tools available. They'll give you all the bits and bobs that you can and you can't do. But this is enough to say, well, hang on. This was a VFR flight. I took off out of Shannon. I went up by the M18. I, you know, we overflew Gort. We went over Ornmoor, up by Loch Carib, over Furbo. And then it was straight down into Connemara Airport. It was, it was grand. It was absolutely grand. And would you believe it, that flight was done on VATSIM and even Kozaki flew the entire thing on VATSIM. Like, that's incredible. It really, really is. So, of the guys who've flown this, we can see Eamon, 1973, Rambog Mord, uh, Tail Rotor, Kozaki, Martel, Fast B, Thomas Spark, and we know that uh, Toto got down as well. And uh, if there's anyone else flying in the area, there's Canoe Head. It, it's a basic, dare I say, even a simple VFR flight, but it's enough to get us started. It's enough to get us started. Now, let's say, for example, if there was a question, hey, what would happen if you miss your taxi and you have to back taxi? Do you need to report that? Do you need to say, oh, by the way, again, communication is key. It's no harm. Most pilots are going to be waiting for you to say, I'm clear or I vacated the runway. But if you haven't said that, well, you can always let them know what's happening, right? Here's two options, right? Once landed, at, once landed, we vacate onto the runway. If you miss the taxiway exit, you'll need to back taxi, right? And once landed, you'll need to transmit what you're doing. Because you'll have a plane coming in and say, why is your man going the wrong way? Right? So, other pilots on frequency should be aware of the back taxi and should also see you. Noting that you haven't yet reported that you're clear of the runway. But for pilots on approach or for those who must taxi back, extreme caution is advised. Be very careful. If you're back taxiing and then you see a plane reporting on final, you've got to tell them something's going on. You have two options, both options. So if you've made it to the taxiway, once you've vacated the runway, you literally say, vacated runway 05, taxi to parking. If you haven't, if you've missed your taxiway, well, then you must say, Connemara traffic, you know, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, 172, back taxi runway 05. Back taxi. Ah, okay. He's not cleared of the runway yet. All right. And then once you back taxi and then you get your exit, then you report vacated runway 05. You're letting the next pilot know the crack that you're off the runway. OK. So the review section, reviewing historical data of your flight, it'll help us focus on the areas we might want to work on. And it's not just about the landing rates, but we all love them. 
but it's not about the landing rates. We want to see how well we flew in terms of our speed, our heading, and our altitude. Because keeping control of our aircraft is vital to online flying. We need to hold a heading. We need to hold altitudes, especially if we're under the instruction of an ATC uh, or an air traffic controller, but also if we're flying to stay under certain airspaces or over them in that case. But for the most part with VFR, we're going to be trying to, you know, get under airspaces. All right. Um, just remember, guys, the active runway is always 07 left. Whose runway is that? And why 07 left? Is 07 right? 8? Um, military turn. Backtrack zero. Oh, hang on. As long as you stayed within the confines of the local flying zone. Uh, did you say tomorrow or the week after? The week after. Oh, Geneva. Very good. That was Geneva we were talking about. So our flight tonight, a lot of information was covered. It's quite okay if you let about 95% of it go over your head. Honestly, there is no panic in that. And the reason being is, lads, we're going to be going over this again and again and again, right? And once, you know, people are a little bit more happier, we'll start putting in maybe a controlled airport. But this is the route we're going to focus on for the next little while. If you want an extra bit of a challenge, take a different airplane. We'll just maintain the speed. We had a Catalina and a helicopter flying with us tonight. That was a nice change because we're now looking out for these aircraft. Oh, that's a big plane, right? So our lesson tonight covers four parts. Plan the flight, file the flight, do the flight, and then we need to review it. That is what the lesson is. And that's what we spent the last hour doing. All the other information prior to that gives you all the information you need in order to carry out the lesson. It provides you with all the information that you need. If you have time this week, read back on the transponder modes, right? You can have a look at some of the uh, equipment and the, you know, cell cal stuff if you want. It's interesting. Uh, and then, you know, doing a couple of flight plans. And because we've done a flight plan, well, we can go back into VATSIM and look at our historic flight plans, I think. So if we go to flight planning, uh, no, if we don't, if we go to dashboard, we look at our last flight. All events today. How do you do this now? No times ratings. Pilot training, no, resources. Where's your historical stuff? Didn't they used to do historical stuff? Pilot training, membership area. Uh, my exams, ATO roster, members, that's it. Jesus, I thought they did this before, no? That's some AIP, policies, resources. Ah, we'll worry about it some other time. Uh, I thought there was a way... Uh, Geneva doesn't have a 07 left, but yeah. Ooh. Other things that we looked at tonight is going to be basic maps so you can figure out, well, where are you flying? You want to pick up visual reference points. Effectively, points of interest, you can look out the window and say, hey, here's the thing. And this is where Microsoft Flight Simulator absolutely excels because it is a VFR-ready flight simulator. They've modeled the world on a one-to-one -one scale. Some areas better than others, but it's a VFR simulator at its heart. That's what it is. The airliner stuff is starting to come in and it's, it's they're starting to get very good. But from a VFR perspective, it's on the it's on the Lee Roadie, right? Venture Sky is handy just to give us real world weather in terms of the wind, expected wind, gusts, temperature, if there's any precip, all this sort of jazz. All right. So do have a read back through it and uh, that's in stats, that uh, good stuff. Have a read back through it. Have a read back through this document. Uh, if you have any questions or if you're stuck with anything, just shout us on Discord. As I said, next week, we'll do more of the same uh, just so you guys are picking up with it. If you have any questions, if anyone's ever stuck, we'll just start shouting and tell us where you're at. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to call it a night. Thank you all so very, very much indeed for flying along with me. And uh, it, it's a hard graph for a Monday night, but sure, listen, we'll, uh, we'll get there together. You know, thanks so much and take care.